Good morning and happy new year. This is Newswire. I'm Dennis Asato. Good morning. Chief Justice Martha Kome has assured the country that the judiciary is now well equipped to effectively execute its constitutional mandate for the benefit of all citizens. The CJ in her new year message noted that the institution has received the necessary facilitation and support to implement its various projects and activities. In a statement, Kome noted that the fundamentals required for us to optimally deliver on the promises of of an efficient judiciary to the people of Kenya is in place. The CJ, who is also the president of the Supreme Court, loaded the decision by President William Ruto to push for the operationalization of the Judiciary Fund, which said has bolstered the institution's financial independence. In yet another unprecedented development in a case linking Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa to proceeds of crime involving public funds from several governmental institutions, a state agency that seized 200 million shillings from his bank accounts now says it was misled to do so. In an affidavit filed at the Court of Appeal, the Asset Recovery Agency says it did not conduct its own investigations and that it relied on the Directorate of Criminal Investigations that had since reached a verdict that the source of funds in former Madeira lawmakers' bank accounts was questionable and therefore had to be surrendered to the state. In the affidavit, a police officer attached to the agency and was tasked with responsibility to identify and trace assets recovered by Gashago dubiously regretted that ARA proceeded to file an application seeking for feature or the funds to the government of Kenya without sufficient proof that the funds were acquired fraudulently. And police in Kisumu County have commenced investigations into various incidents that have seen a number of Kenya Railways trains get pelted with stones at Muhoroni area along the Kisumu Nairobi rail line. According to Evans Gatambe, the office in charge of Kisumu Railways Police Station, railroad officials have reported that stones have been hurled at their trains on three different occasions, damaging windows while endangering the lives of travelers. The latest incident happened Sunday between Kor and Kibigori, but no passenger was injured during the occurrence. The incident, Gitambe added, have all occurred at dawn as the trains snake along the Muhoroni towards Kisumu. It said that police have intensified night patrols in a bid to nab the perpetrators of the uncouth incidents, while underscoring that police will not tolerate the vandalizing and sabotaging of the country's economic assets. And a 28-year-old man died by suicide after hanging himself in his home in Mwe, Kirinyaga County, over yet-to-be-established reasons. Eddie residents say the body of the deceased was found hanging on the rafters of their house by children playing in the same compound. The children then raised alarm, attracting the attention of other residents within the vicinity, who were baffled as to why the young man took his own life, despite the fact that he was allegedly in good spirits during the festive season. The body of the deceased has since been moved to Kibugi Funeral Home pending post-mortem according to Moya West Sub-County Police Commander Wilson Koske. To another sad story, and a security guard was found killed outside a supermarket in Talo Market, Machakos County. Matungulu OCPD Peter Mundi confirmed the incident, saying that a group of criminals invaded the supermarket, dug through its wall, ransacked the cash deposit box before cutting away an unknown amount of money and several other items and dragged the watchman. Tala member of County Assembly Jackson Dak also condemned the incident, which comes just a forfeiture after another security guard was killed outside a church in a near similar fashion. Anna Katile Kialo, the chairperson at Tala Market, said the incident happened roughly a kilometer from the nearest police station. The body of the guard was taken to Kangundo Hospital Mortuary as police begin their investigations. And an emotional Brazil began paying its final respects to football legend Pele with a week at the stadium where he first took the world's breath halfway with his dazzling skill. Hundreds of fans lined up to filed through the Villa Belmiro, home to Pele's long-term club Santos, where the coffin bearing the remains of Ore or the king was displayed in the center of the field. Pele. A three-time World Cup winner, widely considered the greatest football of all time, by Thursday at the age of 82 after a long battle with cancer, he will be in Tad today. This is Newswire. I'm Dennis Aceta. Good morning and Happy New Year.
The Spice News Wire is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. Go ahead and get yours today. It's your time. 102.5 Spice FM Kisumu The following takes place from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. every weekday on Spice FM. Congratulations. <laughs> You've seen the hand of the Lord. Thank you very much. I've earned another title today this morning at Spice <laughs> FM. Mama Justice, I don't mind it. Joel in Kericho. Salama sana heri, kabari asiji. Salama buwana, mambo na mna gani? Salama kabisa bro. Mambo ya inamoi kuliandaje? Mambo ya inamoi, gile likuambia ndugu yangu, alianda subui na hile kari ya kwanza. <laughs> I must have missed it. So I did I. I. <laughs> <laughs> Even if somebody wants to render you irrelevant, there is still work you can do. Okay, 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 sawa. I deserve to keep you accountable. You deserve to give me a report. You don't work for me. Uh, no, I don't work for you. You work for me. <laughs> Do you like that Freudian slip? Lovely, isn't it? Thank you very much. The Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. Good morning. It's the third. It's the second. It's the third. Okay, it's January. Um, <laughs> let's take a look at what it looks like on these Nairobi streets this morning. A little bit of traffic is starting to build up on Mombasa Road. It's going to take us out into the city. And we're seeing also some of it uh, then piling up on the southern bypass. The traffic that has been outside Nairobi has been hectic. Coming into the city, coming off the Nairobi Naivasha Road yesterday was crazy. Hopefully, we'll see what it looks like today in a short while. Uh, looking at coming off of Landy's Road, not so much of traffic. Getting to that roundabout, coming off of Jogo Road, going towards the City Stadium roundabout, where you will see some traffic. We're likely to see a build-up of that as folks come back into the city um, from today, heading in and out of the CBD. It's just the early pickings. Let's see what happens as we go through the morning. Talk to us on Spotify. Of MKE on Twitter. Spice FM. Spice up your life. This is the Situation Room, the home of hard hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is The Situation Room. The Good only morning. way to stop. Happy New Year. It's 2023. Just like that. Just like that. We are into a new year. How are you doing? Welcome to Kenya's biggest conversation. This is the Situation Room. Do a call. Good morning. Have we sing that song for New Year? Which one? The 12 Days of New Year. <laughs> uh, I don't know that one. You don't know it? No, there's uh, uh, what Eric is referring to. Mm. Is a Kenyan national anthem mm. annex that was created in the Moi era mm. in the days when there was a New Year's uh, bull ball. Mm. Where, yes, it was a bull dance. You found that it was men who actually danced. Oh, uh, bull ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and how would it go? Happy New Year. Yeah. Happy New Year. Yes, happy, happy New, new year. year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. How creative. Happy no, no, seriously. <laughs> that was a song. It was just one word. Had, Happy New Year is one it word. It had three words, this song. <laughs> one the word. The lyrics were three. <laughs> so now you, who perhaps is unaccustomed to the lyrics of the song, we've just sang it. That was the song. Happy New Year. Mm. Mm. Okay. That's it. Mm. And you dance. Well, you dance to it as well. Yes. <laughs> Believe me, it was a bull dance. <laughs> okay. Okay. I see. Yes, city. Yes, please. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to my brother. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I made a mental note. Huh? Mental note. Yes, that I'd be careful not to go around wishing people a Happy New Year. Because? because? 
it's a bit mundane to go around wishing people a happy new year when pl- people are not happy. Mm. Mm. No. I'd rather wish you a thoughtful new year. Okay. Because people are thoughtful. No, you need to be thoughtful. Yeah. With all the encumbrances. When people are not happy, isn't it right then to wish them happiness? Mm. If you look at it that way then you are absolutely right. Mm. But I was thinking that they'll be wished happy new year anyway by <laughs> others. By other if, people yes. it shall not be you. <laughs> it shall be not, thank <laughs> you very this? much. So you ah, want right. to, to add the mix. I say guys even as you're happy can you be a little can thoughtful? You be thoughtful? Yes because <laughs> Um, the only way you perhaps understand a clearer way forward is if you give a little thought to the circumstances you find yourself in. Mm. Take a little mental journey as to how we got there, mm-hmm. and forget the wee bit. Then take that journey again and figure out how you got there. Okay. Uh, My thoughts on the subject. Eric, good morning. How are you? I'm very well. The time that we were apart from one another, mm. did, you, did you fare well? <laughs> did you fare well? Right. Yes, I did. Mm. Thank you. Well done. Took time to just chill mm. and relax. Chill, kabisa. Embroidery. Embroidery. Chill. Totally. Okay. Totally. totally. Did you travel? I did. Within or without? <laughs> <laughs> Within what? <laughs> <laughs> we'll go yeah, to within. Let me tell you. <laughs> I went to Thedegua. You went to Thedegua? Okay, I did not go intentionally. Mm. But somehow... You found yourself in Thedegua. I found myself passing through. I was like, Allah, it's a real place. The only but, thing I didn't do was I take have, pictures. I don't have photographic did, did we not try to... Yeah, imp- goodna, those things ins- to and tell you yourself. repeatedly that it actually does exist. Thedegua. Where is it? So now tell us. Where is it? It's let's, somewhere let's find there. out where you actually Village went to market, <laughs> You keep going outside Ruaka. You pass. Then I just saw the Digwa hardware. Ah. Mm-hmm. Past Ruaka. Actually, it's on Kiambu Road. <laughs> yeah, you go past inside there. You come out Ridgeway somewhere there. Yeah, inside. <laughs> oh, so you got into into through... She went through, into Runda. Through Runda. Yes. yes. From Village Market, you got into Runda. Yes. You got out of Runda yes. onto Kiambu Road. Yes. yes. That's and it. you were heading towards Kiambu. Yes. And you then passed you, the yes. I was then heading towards Kiambu, yes. When Very you mentioned good. Ridgeways, then yes. Mm. Very good. You went through Runda. Good. Very good. Well done. Thank you very much. Ulionaje? Hmm? Imeona hardware. Ulion, huh? It exists. This was the thing. It's a big place. It's a huge, huge, huge place. Formerly just coffee plantation, but now mm-hmm. concrete pl- plantation. <laughs> and they keep growing more and more concrete plantations mm. there. I also passed it is shucks. <laughs> Which is? Not on the same day. <laughs> from then they go to Moroni. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not yeah. on the same day. Which and then this place this that Eddie greets us from all the time. I saw the sign leading to Koru. I saw the sign. Mm-hmm. I saw the sign. That's the creature road. It opened up my eyes. Uh, you saw that big sign telling you Moroni Sugar Factory. Eh? That one. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's a creature side. So you saw the sign. No, did you go through the, 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 the there's the what you call the old road that yeah, doesn't yeah. go through Kericho. Mm. It mm-hmm. goes through Londiani. Yes, Londiani. Man, that's a scenic route. Beautiful. Beautiful. As scenic. you scenic. Yes. D- Beautiful. drive down. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah? And you can see uh, so you saw my Did uh, you see Tamu? You saw my neck of the woods. Tamu. Yeah. <laughs> Sugarcane country. Did you? Sugar country. Sugar country. Uh. Ah. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you very much for keeping it locked in Spice FM. We're back. We're back with a bang this year. And yes, we'll also be telling you, because schools are still closed and they'll be opening in what? About two or three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Exactly. Three weeks today. There's still an opportunity to win school fees. What? How much? 35,000 shillings. Uh Mm Uh-huh. This is through Kiwi shoe step uh, up and shine stop up keep it keep, it's called black shoe, shoe polish. polish i was about to say shoe black polish you, it's okay <laughs> how do you want it it's kiwi okay. black shoe polish step up and shine get instant airtime or data and get into a draw to win thirty-five thousand shillings worth of school fees still here to remind you about that go into any shop and buy your kiwi and you get into that draw and all you need to do is once you buy, dial star 459 star 5 hash, enter the code that you'll sign, find under the lead, and you're in the row. Just like that. Yep, yep. School is coming. New Year. Please remember everything. Hmm? Now, 
Uh, do you have information about what's been happening in China? I do. Over the last couple of weeks? I do. Please tell us. In one minute, let me let you know. Mm-hmm. Now, there's been crazy, crazy cases of COVID-19. We know that we saw everybody's attributing it to the lifting of you know COVID-19 measures and then boom, things went crazy. Um, Al Jazeera reports over the last 24 hours that Chinese have now started to return to regular activities amid the surge. There's still a surge. There's still crazy cases, but residents in cities such as Beijing, Shanghai and Wuhan are getting back to normal life after the end of zero COVID measures. Some people in China's key cities are braving the cold and spike in COVID-19 infections to return to regular activity confident of a boost to the economy as more recover from infections the economy definitely had taken a hit and likely to take an even larger or rather deeper one amongst those who gathered to sky to engage in activities there were upbeats that uh, china after <clears throat> it dropped its stringent measures on the 7th of December to ad- adopt a strategy of living with the virus and now saw this huge now infections across the country. And they said, look, we're going to get out of this. The epidemic has given us no opportunity to come out and play. After the end of this lockdown, we've had to scan the health code any more, or ro- rather not had to scan the uh, health code or to do any more checks for travels. And so they're looking to- forward to the opportunity to come out. But the thing is, they're doing this in the light of this surge that still continues infections are still rising but they're saying look we've not had an opportunity to be out in years Mm. and we're going to do that now regardless people want to go to beijing for the new year people want to come out to work people want to get back to normal life and they're saying that those who have been infected were not as anxious anymore and this is specifically uh, in wuhan china's Biggest holiday, the Lunar year, New Year, begins on the 21st of this month uh, when the railway network is expected to carry 5.5 million passengers. And people are looking forward to that. They didn't get to do it last year and hoping that they can do it this year. Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. There's a new COVID variant. It's the XBB.1.5. And it's already taken in 25 cases in the UK. And they're saying it's a wake-up call and it could worsen the crisis that is already um, being faced by the NHS. It's a highly co- infectious COVID strain. Mm. And it has emerged and is already behind one in 25 cases. So f- um, looking at, you know... <laughs> That percentage, quite high, 4% um, of all cases, is this new strain. Highly infectious, and they're saying it could be a wake-up call. People thought that COVID was out the window. Well, maybe not so much. Ministry of Health in Kenya, now bringing things back home, is talking about four having tested positive from a sample size of 156 in the last 24 hours, giving Kenya a positivity rate of just under 3%. So it looks like it. Okay, 18 minutes after 6. Happy New Year. We are live streaming the show. Are you online? Let us know where you tuned in from. Say Happy New Year to you, us, and our loved ones, plus yours. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody, let's take a look at the weather forecast. We'll be back shortly. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. The adults in the room. I've seen some marriages, relationships, or habitings struggle because there was no independence of the relationship. It needs a certain level of intelligence. Mm. You need to reach a place where you know yourself. And again, you're not feeding off society. Whether it is matters of the heart, finances, or work that's weighing on your mind, worry not. Tune in to Adults in the Room every Monday to Friday from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. The Adults in the Room will help you stay winning. Only on 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. 16 degrees and cloudy conditions in Nairobi. A bit of a sprinkle here and there. Highs of 21 and we'll see lows of 16. It's cloudy at 15 in Nakuru. Highs of 21 and lows of 11. 15 and cloudy in Nyeri. Highs of 20 and lows of 11. And we'll see lows of 11 as well in a cloudy Eldoret at 12. 25 and partly cloudy in Mombasa. Highs of 31. And we'll see highs of 31 as well in a cloudy Malindi at 25. It's partly cloudy at 18 in Kisumu. Highs of 28 and lows of 18. And we'll see highs of 25 in a cloudy Kakamega at 18. It's 15 and cloudy in Kampala, highs of 27, and we'll see highs of 31 in a cloudy Dar es Salaam at 26. 16 and cloudy in Johannesburg, highs of 24, and it'll go to highs of 33 in a hazy Lagos at 24. It's 24 and cloudy in Kinshasa, highs of 31 and lows of 23. Let's look out into Beijing, where it's sunny 
at zero. Highs of three and lows of minus nine. And Paris is cloudy at four with highs of 11. We'll see highs of 12 in London where it's cloudy at five. And New York on Monday night is cloudy at 10. Coming into Tuesday, highs of 13 and lows of eight. Spice FM, Nakuru. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. All right, 21 minutes after six. People are online. They're awake. They're awake. Yes. Happy New Year. The great trio called when you catch sub county is tuned in. Clear fast and I'm good morning to you. Happy New Year. Joseph Hightower says, you great people. Welcome back. Al Haj says, good morning. Good morning to you. I really missed you guys. MC Ogola says, well, we're glad to be back. Good morning. Outer Ring is well represented. MC Akimanzi, good morning to you. Tuning in from Wingy Central. You're not in Mombasa. You're not in Nyali. Well, um, okay. Good morning. David Ogio is here with us. And um, Enyati is also tuning in this morning. Meru Makutano. Is there a Makutano in every city? Yes. Yeah. In every town? Yes. There is one, eh? Yeah, on the way to every town. That is on the way to every town, there's a Makutano. There's my Lisita or my Linne or my And Sokumjinga. Yes. There's a Sokumjinga, <laughs> I'm telling you. And there's also my Jengo. Mm. Okay. Yes. Just let you understand. And Amelimani. And Amelimani. Mm. Okay. I got it. I got it. Waiveda Joroge says she's tuned in this morning. Good morning to you. Bewa Macha, good morning to you, Ashley. Karibu, karibu, karibu. Um, Vincent Omani says, Happy New Year. Welcome back. Thank you, thank you. And Robert Mbogo is tuned in as well. Waweru Ngeve says, Good morning. Tuning in from Loresho. Another year again. Hustle as usual. Karibu sit. Nakuru City is listening. Andrew Mark, we see you. Beatrice Ngenya is also listening as well. Karibu Sana. Doha, Qatar. Um, also tuned in from Dubai is Kolo says good morning. Welcome in back. Thank you, TJ Apache. You are in Kisumu, Maseno. You're not in Goa. Wait, wait, wait. Who? Apache normally is in Goa. He's hmm? home. He's home from Goa. All right. And he says Kenya is blooming. Right. Let's keep spice the situation room running. Okay. Welcome, TJ. Karibu, karibu. Mm -hmm. Happy New Year. Paul Mugo is tuning from Nanyuki. Andrew Franklin has put good in quotes and says, Good morning from a rain soaked Bernard Estate, Lavington, where electricity failed around 3 a.m. and remains off. <laughs> same as it ever same as it ever was again in 2023. Hey, Andrew Bona. Sorry, Bona. Oleni Andrew. <laughs> Juma <clears throat> Mnyama says good morning, happy new year. Mogo, it's a shame that I'm just discovering you this week. Wow, okay. You said the music is okay. This was from last night, but it's good. We recognize you this morning and we say Karibu Sana. Thank you all for joining us. Good to be back. Everybody, welcome to Kenya's the biggest conversation. The new year is here. We all have a reason to celebrate. Mm. What better way to celebrate than to be thoroughly entertained by the world class offerings that are on Showmax? Showmax.com or the Showmax app is where you get all the entertainment online platform from where you can stream or download the best local and international entertainment. You can watch what you want anytime, anywhere, on any device, on TV, on mobile phone, on your tablet. You know, when you said device, uh, I was hoping you would get to that point. To that device of yes, yours. Yes, the device that is otherwise known as a companion. Mm. Mm -hmm. the With Samsung all Galaxy. Yes. Tab S8 Ultra. Yes, eh. the features haven't changed. They're the same ones as you know. Hey, 14.6 inches. Mm -hmm. Okay. Clear as broad daylight with sunshine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> you can be daylight and no sunshine, really. Uh -huh. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eh. A charge that is restored for three whole days. Uh -huh. Goodness gracious me. Is what? that not a wonderful way to begin a new year? What more could one ask for? And. Uh. And all you need to do is figure out how to buy one. You may <laughs> think the price is a bit daunting, uh. but it doesn't have to be daunting. You can pay in bits. Hola? Yep, but I'll be telling you that as time goes on. Okay. Yes, you can. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now, use it and tell us the proverb. First proverb of the year. Yes, we are in the country of Benin. And do is it pronounced Benin? Well, no. It's uh, like where Andrew Franklin is. 
Bernard. <laughs> Bernard Estet. <laughs> Bernard Estet in Lavington. So this Benin. is b- b- the Republic of Benin. Uh, yeah. How is it pronounced? Uh, do? Benin. Benin. <laughs> <laughs> in French, it's Benin, Benin because the N is silent. But in Benin, it's Benin. <laughs> okay. So it was all of the larger Benin Empire from which some parts still are in <clears throat> Nigeria. Like that. Actually, if you go to Bini, the people in Bini will tell you it's Bini, B I N I. Yeah, but that's how it should be then. Mm. So we're in Bini. We're in Bini. And you're oh, right. Yeah. If you look at the kingdom, yeah. yes, it was in what we now refer to as Nigeria. Yeah. Okay. But it's bordered by Togo to the west, Nigeria to the east, Burkina Faso, northwest, Niger. Still, I've got well, Niger, mm. northeast. The capital is a bit Porto Novo. Newport, in other yes. words, mm-hmm. okay, and that's uh, but the seat of government is not there, Mm-mm. it is in Cotonou, yes, okay, yes, right. I'll tell you who the president is in the next hour, okay. A proverb now, this particular proverb puzzled me, that is why I'm going to read it first. It mm. really puzzled me. Anyone who sees beauty and does not look at it will soon be poor. <laughs> <laughs> told you. See? I see puzzlement written all over your face. Anyone who sees beauty and does not look at it will soon be poor. Mm-hmm. Quoi? Welcome to my world. Beauty is not necessarily human here, right? Not no, necessarily. It is something yes. that is good. You look yes. at something that's good, you go for it. Voila, as Ndu would say. Mm. Mm. Ça, c'est bon. Yes, n'est-ce pas, as Eric would say. <laughs> well done. <laughs> uh-huh. mm-hmm. Anyone who sees beauty mm-hmm. and does not look at it will be poor. You know, from not die poor. No, I was about to say, we'll, we'll go blind. Then I realized, no, that's not what the proverb says. <laughs> we'll be poor. <laughs> uh, okay. So, shall we look at the newspaper headlines? Let's do it. Let's. What's on the front page of the standard? Window? On the front page of the standard, the big fight for the soul of Azimio. Azimio had a soul. The big what? The big fight for the soul of Azimio. Right. So somebody's going after something. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ryla's plan to rein in Kenya Kwanzaa in 2023. There's a plan. The state of the EAC dream, the gains and the mm. losses. Mm. And sharing photos without the consent is... Uh, without consent is an invasion of privacy and can attract criminal and civil sanctions love gone or i pain of intimate photos online <laughs> i'll tell you about that in a minute mm. in a minute in a minute in a minute yeah. uh-huh. city yes please what's in the start oh. yes please go ahead oh you have that you have another paper no i have another story oh, please go ahead lula another, another headline i love that name lula uh. is the new president of brazil but anyway, now you may carry on. Right. Officially, officially. Officially. Yes. He had won the election. Yes, but, but he had he not, not been, been declared, declared president. Now he's been, now he's now president. He's been sworn in. Mm. But this guy had been president before. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Mm. So nothing stops you from being president again. Well, no, no. not in this country. Not, not in this country. country. Mm. Good country, this one. <laughs> a business Daily headline. <clears throat> uh-huh. okay. I ignored the, head, the headline of the star. I find it a bit depressing. Because... Well, let me read it and see if you will not be depressed. Mm. Taxpayers oh, spent okay. thirty. Shh. It's okay. Go on. Spent thirty-six billion for August election. Isn't ah, that good news? That's fine. Good. Fine. E. Now, that's for August. I thought it's taxpayers ah. to spend. If we, we've if already it spent, spend. we've moved. So we are okay. We've already spent. I don't think. You, took up. I don't think you get it. There's only thirty-six billion. Wait. <laughs> When you're told mm. we spent, the problem. <laughs> no, mm. if it was spent, mm. it means it's a debt. It means you are now going As to Jennifer? pay. We are, it was spent. That means yes, it was expended, but <clears throat> it has to be recovered because the story. Why it's depressing is. Treasury says spending to go up as major bills are pending. Now you tell me, yeah, how, how interesting is that? Spending to go up as major bills are pending. Yes. Meaning, mm. you have debts, understood, but there are other debts. So if you think these debts are an issue, 
there are the other dads. And I'm sure if you talk to the other dads, they'll also tell you, excuse me, there are people who Ah, were here before you. We okay with that one. This year, we are not being shaken by anything. All right. We We will not be sold for fear. Yes. Okay. (laughs) Eric has begun a new mantra. He shall shall not be shaken. No, nothing. Mm. (laughs) No shaken. Right. Business Daily. Uh Duh. As in Dar es Salaam. Oh, I was going to say what? <laughs> Dar. Mm-hmm. As in Dar es Salaam. Mm-hmm. Takes on Kenya with 27. No, no, no. This one, I'm reading it wrongly. It's not 27. It's 271 billion shillings. Congo SGR link. Dar es Salaam to do what? Takes on Kenya. In they are connecting to SGR. They are connecting to Congo. You see, Tanzania has inked a cadet, mm. yani Deni, uh-huh. of $2.2 billion, uh-huh. dollars, okay? With two Chinese contractors. That was last month, as in December, when you are celebrating Christmas, mm. then they were signing this deal, okay? Mm. Mm. To see the final section, this is what they had planned, eh? of the 2,102 kilometer SGR. Mm. Now, this makes it the longest stretch of modern railway line on the continent. And it, it's hoped that it will be completed in 2026. 2026 is three years from now. Okay. So, it's basically from uh, Dar es Salaam onto their border with the DRC. Onto DRC. And you see, ours, which was supposed to get to Uganda, mm. st- is still in Naivasha. Mm. Mm. Uh, well, Uganda is not that far, is it? Yeah, it's just, it's just around the corner. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So anyway, we shall see. Yeah. A daily nation, uh-huh. a storm over push for handshake. UDA and Jubilee leaders reject call by Kikuyu elders to end the strained relationship between President William Ruto and his predecessor, a Uhuru Kenyatta. Who's rejecting the call? So, there are people who are calling for Uhuru and Ruto to shake hands. Yes. And the people who are saying they should not shake hands. That is what it amounts to. Okay. It's a discussion. Okay. And according to this headline, it is a heated discussion. In fact, according to this article, it is a very heated discussion. (laughs) Uh, Yes. Now that... Back page? Of the nation, mm. eh, there are two things. Units that counties will get in affordable housing plan. Mm. Affordable housing what? Plan. plan. President has asked governors to provide land for projects as state provides amenities. Okay? Mm. That's the headline. Good headline, this one. Okay. Very good. The other one, prisons PS. The prisons PS is a lady by the name of uh, Mary Mudoni. Yep. Okay? Yep. Once cases of mothers jailed with children fast tracked. This is also good news. Very. Okay. She's been big on this one. Uh, she Visiting prisons and actually looking at those mothers and the children. Now, this is the sort of thing you read. It warms your heart mm. on a cold morning such as this. Combritry. Yeah? Combritry. Absolutely. Mm. I have pleaded mm. with some that some of the cases are fast tracked so that we don't keep mothers who have children in remand for years on end. This is good. Good for you, P.S. Mary Mudoni. Good very, for you. very good. 26 minutes to 7. Let's take this quick break. Let's see how the roads are looking like, and then we will look at the news of the headlines in detail. Good morning. <laughs> Get ready to fall in love with the new Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. Featuring intelligent 360 audio, which makes the sound feel more realistic than ever before. Not only that, they can feature enhanced head tracking, making every movement stay in sync, so you get an immersive experience. Designed to fit comfortably, the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro will also help you stay connected by automatically popping up on your Samsung Galaxy devices and with just a tap, you can connect. As simple as that. Available in all select Samsung stores countrywide. (laughs) 
All right, so let's look at what's happening in the city now. At a few minutes after 6.30, there's traffic that's starting to build up on Jogo Road. It's going to take you out towards Landis and it'll clog up a little bit as you get out towards Kamkunji. Um, into the CBDs where we'll see most of it. We're still looking at probably getting into a uh, traffic situation later on in the day um, or looking at... Um, Mombasa Road is also pretty busy getting out towards Uhuru Highway. Coming off a of thicker super highway, we'll not see much this morning. Not much in terms of traffic. We're also seeing a little bit here and there. It's building up on Gong Road. But Westerns looks pretty good. You'll be able to, you'll be able to get in and out uh, without too much of a headache. So traffic not too terrible right now. Let's talk on Spice of MKE on Twitter and see how it moves in half an hour. Spice up your life. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. It's 24 minutes to 7. So, in detail. Uh -huh. Okay, let me tell you a story. Mm. On this page of the Standard 3, mm. there's two stories. Head teacher found mm. dead in a woman's house. And just after that, a court has freed a man accused of killing an infant in fight over name with his wife. Remember, we looked at that story a few months ago. So let me start with that one. A man accused of killing a newborn in an alleged naming fight with his wife five years ago has been set free. Justice Teresa Maveka said the key witness, who was the mother of the child, did not testify. And the other witnesses relied on what they had heard about the incident. And we all know that hearsay is not admissible as evidence in court. According to that, the man had raised substantial questions that denied the prosecution's case. She noted that although the child had died, it could not have been in the hands of his father. It is truly unfortunate that this young child lost his life in the alleged fight for parental super, uh, supremacy over the child's right to a name and nationality, the judge said in her ruling. Parent supremacy rights can have fatal results, as in this case. She added the constitutional edict to each citizen and the state that the best interest of the child be the primary consideration in matters that affect a child ought to be the guiding light for each parent and guardian then such fatalities would be unheard of. Justice Maveka said that a name is everything, including life. The people who give life want to name that which they give life to so it can carry on their name, their culture, their history, their identity. In this case, it took away everything from this child. On January 14th, 2017, the man condemned or rather codenamed IMW, was charged with murder. He was accused of killing an unnamed child. The minor was just six weeks old. The first witness to be called by the state was government pathologist Dr. Titus Ngulungu. He said the child had curd-like material in his trachea and stomach. The same had obstructed the tubes that carry air to the lungs. According to Ngululu, the cause of death was caused by a head injury. The death, rather, was a head injury. So, um... Because the mother of the child then failed to testify and everybody else who came in said they heard but did not necessarily see, Maveka had no choice but to throw out the case and free the man. Head it's a teacher, sad one, eh? It is a sad one. It's a sad one. So the, the argument was there. on what... To the, name the child. What name the child will bear. Yes. They're from different tribes. Yes. Mother and father. Mother is Kisi, father is Kikuyu. Yes. And both take it, of course, very seriously in terms of how you will name. But they did not agree on this. Mm. And so it is alleged that the father took the life of the child five years ago. And he's been in for five years. Wow. Okay. Justice Maleka said, we, well, there's no evidence. We don't know this. Let him go. Mm. Head teacher found dead in a woman's house. I'll tell you this really quickly. Uh, Ezekiel Nkere, 47, was the head teacher of Getengeririe Primary School. He was last seen at Egesire Village in West Mugirangu constituency. Police in Yamira are investigating the murder of a head teacher allegedly killed inside a house belonging to a woman working for the Nyamira County government. Ezekiel Nkere, 47, was the head teacher at Getengeririe Primary School. Nkere seemed to have had a premonition of his own death going by the videos he uploaded on his TikTok. 
TikTok account. See, do you know what that is? Uh, a few days before he was killed. One of the videos he posted was of the song Dunia to Naipita, We Are Passing Through This World by Samba Mampalangala. He later posted another video of the song Nitaingia Lango. In the song, he signs off he, s with Wakati Nita Jikuta Mbinguni Kwa Baba. On the day he met his death, Nkere had been contracted as a master of ceremony in a wedding that was to be held at Nyamira Catholic Church. He was last seen at Egesiria village in West Mugiranga constituency in Nyamira being dropped off by a border border rider. His wife, Gladys Bonareri, reported him missing on the 30th of December. On New Year's Day, acting on an intelligence report, police conducted a search in one of the suspect's homes. The suspect is a nurse. She could not be traced, so police broke in. The body was wrapped in a carpet and hidden in a poultry house. A report says the body had started decomposing. The body was moved to Nyamira Level 5 Hospital Morgue as investigations start. Nyamira South Sub-County Criminal Investigations Officer Paul Makonge said they were looking for the woman and her boyfriend. The murder comes after another teacher, Lydia Onyoni, the principal of Rangenyo Girls, also died under unclear circumstances within her school compound mm. just months ago. So, he disappeared and his body was found wrapped in a what? Carpet in a poultry house. And the owners of this house? Not there. Not there. And the owner of this house had to be a nurse. Yes. Who's supposedly in the company of her boyfriend. But there was some connection between her and this gentleman, rather the, the deceased. So, they're looking for her and trying to make the connection. Hey. Mm -hmm. I mean, the body's in her house. Yeah, but you know, until she's found. Until she's found and asked the questions, she cannot, we cannot know until more light is shed on this. It's a very sad and bizarre story, that one. And for mm. some reason, he's said to have known mm. that he was going to die. Hey. Now we're talking about those kind of stories. Let's, let's just dispense with them, okay? Okay. Karatina University student Phyllis Jepleting, who was 19 years old, died of strangulation according to post-mortem report. Jepleting's decomposing body was found in her boyfriend Ezra Kip Kip Kemoy's house on Nakea Estate in Nakuru on Sunday. The post-mortem conducted by government pathologist Titus Ngolungu on Monday indicated that she died from asphyxiation caused by a manual neck compression. As a result of my exam, I, found, I formed the opinion that the cause of death was asphyxiation. Swabs were also taken for further analysis to establish whether she was raped before she died. The exercise was conducted in the presence of the bereaved family and the police. She was a maths and biology first-year student. According to a relative she, who sought anonymity, the student traveled to Nakuru on the December 19th to visit her boyfriend. After they closed for the December holidays, Jepleting's parents sent her 2,600 bob, told her not to travel home. However, she decided to... Told her not to travel home. Sent her money and told her not to travel. I think the knot is misplaced. Okay. However, she decided to travel to Nakuru to spend the holiday with her boyfriend. We've established that she's traveled with her fellow student but alighted in Nakuru City, saying she wanted to visit a relative. That's the last time her friend saw her. It has since emerged that she usually spent time at her boyfriend's house before going home after school. The DCI is treating Mr. Kipkemoi, a security guard in Nakuru, as a prime suspect. Police said he was on the run and his mobile phone was switched off. Jepleting was last seen alive at her boyfriend's house on the 26th of December. Another sad one. A 19-year-old girl dead. She was strangled to death. Good grief. Something just struck me. Mm. That the pathologist is extremely busy. He is. My mm. goodness. He is. Gululu has a lot of cases that he's looking at now. Mm shouldn't be yeah it is yeah it's a sad one okay there was some bit of an upbeat, upbeat story earlier well there's a bit of an upbeat story uh. in the in the star <clears throat> well it's not really upbeat it's this one actually downbeat but let me read it nonetheless mm -hmm. broke oil firm holds 1.7 billion in its bank accounts this is the national oil corporation mm-hmm its losses increased losses to 4 billion 
from 3 billion in 2020. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, this is where the story gets interesting. Eh? They said the national cooperation is broke. That's according to the Auditor General's report. They said these right. guys, the books are in the red. Mm. Okay. And that the year that ended, they doubled their losses because this year that ended, their losses amounted to 969 million. But the year before, they were only 494 million. Mm -hmm. All right. Those are losses mm. according to the books. And yet, when you look at the accounts, okay, these are the details. There's an account that is set up for the special funds projects. It comprises Block 14T fund, which has 1.313 billion. billion shillings. Yes. Mm -hmm. The single boy uh -huh. mooring jetty fund, which has 11.4 million. CSR project fund, which has 30.2 million. Exploration and product capacity building fund has 72.9 million and 425 million for the lab equipment fund. Okay. Now, the Auditor General says that this is a bit of a problem because she flagged the unutilized funds, saying that if these funds had been given to the National Oil Corporation for utilization, mm. it means that there were things that ought to be done by it. Mm. But unfortunately, according to what she says again, that what you're seeing relates to the activities and projects initiated in partnership with government agencies, and yet... Part of the problem is because they lacked guidelines on utilization and, liquida and liquidation of balances mm. upon the closure <coughs> of the projects. And in some cases, the projects were incomplete and yet the funds were still sitting in the accounts. So this is a picture of a setup that is confusing mm -hmm. in my books. Right. There is money and yet there is no money. Mm. You are broke and yet there is money. <laughs> Which one is it? You know, there is, see, each of those is a specific fund. Very specific. There's the exploration money for the for Block T. Yes. For Block T. Mm. And that's the one that has 1.3 billion shillings. Yes. You see, that money is for a specific purpose. It's for that purpose. Uh, CSR is for a specific purpose. Yes. The Jetty Project is a specific purpose. Lab Equipment Fund, separate it's project. Specific. Yeah. So... Maybe the question is, should the board have sat down and looked at these things and then the board maybe decided what to do? You know, And made a conversation around it, had a conversation around it. This is now what <coughs> raises the question because the total likely amounts to yeah. 1. 6 billion, 1.673884 billion. Sitting in accounts. It's sitting. Mm. Now, as you say correctly, they were intended, the purposes were clear. Now, if purposes were clear, then it means that these are services that the country ought to have set in place for the benefit of what the citizenry. So, denied. Mm. Maybe not. Just what because it's sitting there doesn't mean it hasn't been it hasn't been drawn. Let it's, me ask. It's the balance that has been found in the account. Yes, but if the money is in the account, it means it was given according to what was budgeted for. Mm -hmm. That was the money that was intended yep. to be used. Yep. So, if there's a balance. Does it not imply that it wasn't utilized fully? Maybe that was the, the intention was not to utilize everything fully at the same time. The penny has dropped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about the National Oil Corporation, because there is a renewed focus on the National Oil Corporation, right? Mm -hmm. If you remember when in the Kibaki years, the focus on National Oil Corporation was huge. It was meant to be the one that uh, gives the stabilization of prices. It was. Or it, it, was. Blah, blah, blah. it was. It's the one that was giving out. Uh, I mean, it's the custodian of all these oil blocks and all those things. It was. A lot of money and effort was put, placed on the National Oil Corporation. Yes. But then, uh, as with everything else that gets a lot of money from government, political appointments come and spoil everything. So the management is not even able to run this institution the way it's intended. The way it's supposed to run. So here we are. We have a, an organization that should be doing a lot that it's not doing. And now there's a new focus to give it more money. There's a ah. new focus. And you'll see in this new year. There's a new focus that will be National Oil Corporation should be the one that stabilizes. So, for example, there was a story the other day on the government of Kenya entering into negotiations with uh, other countries. Well, there are new regulations that have been gazetted on um, energy and petroleum they allow the government to go and negotiate government to government on acquisition of uh, petroleum products mm -hmm. you know now who that one is that is the national oil corporation so if kenya for example agrees with a uh, neighbor country not qatar uh, 
say Saudi Dubai, Arabia. say Saudi Arabia, right? To get access to oil is with the National Oil Corporation. They bring it, they sell it to us. They'll have to be given a lot of effort, a lot of support on this. The question is, will proper management Happen. be put in place? Shall we have a competent <coughs> board in place? Shall you have a competent CEO or MD in place, in office? Or is this going to be used to be a conduit for just stealing? It has been in you the past. Know, let me just put a little ice into this so that we, the National Oil Corporation doesn't feel that it's a lone range. It isn't. Mm. According to the Auditor General, now, this particular uh, institution is technically insolvent. Mm. However, other state corporations declared insolvent are as follows. KEBS, the National Museums of Kenya, <laughs> NEMA, isn't this interesting? Mm -hmm. So here's Sugar, mm -hmm. Post Bank, and Poster Kenya. All flagged. All flagged as being technically Insolvent. insolvent. I thought that bit would be necessary for me to add, given what you just explained. Mm. And yet, and yet, money was given. You know, this eternal question of fine, we keep saying that the money was inadequate. Can we at least be told what the money that was given? Uh, thank you very yes. much. What yeah, was yeah, it? Or, what was it? That, how that was it used? Got, how did you use what it? What did you do with it? Yes. Did you manage it properly? In the event that there was any kind of mismanagement, has a proper audit and then action been taken when you find that perhaps things did not go as they ought to be? But do you know what the answer is? Like with the oil corporation that we're seeing now, mm -hmm. throw more money at it. That's the way to solve the problem. If there was mismanagement, if there was misappropriation, throw more money at it and that will solve the problem. Seems as upside down, backwards kind of action. <laughs> You'll use it, here. it will be infiltrated by thugs. Telling and that's you. the problem. It's the same thing. I mean, we've seen, we talk about Kenya Ports Authority, right? How much money is actually uh, generated by the Kenya Ports Authority? Who knows, really? How much money Are is exactly generated by Kenya Pipeline? Yes. How much money? All these things. Kenya Ports Authority. Mm. You see, the question you want to ask is um, you hear of money that these corporations give to the exchequer okay yeah we hear now you, you tell me if there is a certain amount of money it's in the billion that is given so mm. how, how much do they make mm. good lord yes anyway by the talking of K kenya ports authority uh, the acting md john mongemi uh, had his term lapsing on 31st of december so they're now looking for a new what New MD. New MD. Yes, yes. At the Kenya Ports Authority. Yep, they're looking for a new MD. There's a bit of a problem there. Uh -huh. mm. Because there was a consultancy firm that was supposed to get them a new MD. Couldn't. Couldn't. Well, they tried and somehow the person didn't quite meet the required standards, etc., etc. And the uh -huh. one who did, mm. a gentleman by the name of Justice Nirangi, mm. a, he had issues. He yeah. had been former GM mm. for corporate services. Mm. Yes, but uh, much as his code 80... Uh, 0.9 percent uh, among the people who had shortlisted. Unfortunately for him, he was sacked alongside former MD Gishiri Ndua mm. over corruption allegations. But is currently the executive. Note this. Mm. But is currently the executive secretary of the Northern Corridor Transit and Transport Corridor Authority, based in Mombasa. So there's a tad of conflict of interest. Now he was sacked, but he's currently uh, the uh, uh, MD. Uh, Executive of this particular government entity. Okay. Uh, Tell schools us. Schools opening. Mm. Mm. At Tell some us. point in three weeks. Yes. Private schools hit middle class with sharp fees increase. Private academies, academies, please, eh, have increased school fees by up to 47%. Okay. If you thought you were swimming in deep dark waters, you're going to go a little bit further into the deep end. Uh, at Ukitaka, raised by 147%. Ahead of the new academic calendar starting this month, as they move to protect their earnings from a surge in the cost of living, mm. the institutions attribute the changes to rising inflation that eased to 9.1% in December after hitting a 67 month high of 9.6% in October as households grappled with the high cost of goods and services meaning that the higher fees will further choke 
family finances. A spot check by the Business Daily showed that some schools had sent notices out to parents and guardians on the upward adjustment of tuition fees and other charges including transport. The 20,000 increase <laughs> in fees is beyond my means and I am contemplating finding a more affordable school for my child. This is one parent in Nairobi. A letter from the school dated November 29th, 2022 shows parents had been notified of an impending tuition fee increase of 7.5% and transport charges of between 10 to 15 percent based on route starting this month so at the two you have about 22.5 uh, percent so far the parents note uh, no explanation had been offered for the higher fees to 63 500 which translates to about 47 percent uh, for the children and this is not actually because you have three kids in the school that all of you are charging uh, are going to pay 47 percent no no each of you Per fees, you're looking about almost fifty percent increase across board. Because inflation, cost of living, in Panda, Tasisi, we have to buy the things that's expensive at school, so increase the school fees. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <kisomo si surwari. laughs> <laughs> 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 Surely. It's an interesting <laughs> article. Do we even, yes, we have a minute. Huh? Uh, so, so, I'm saying it's interesting because it's something that one perhaps ought to look at with, should we say, with keener interest. Huh? Mm. The headline in the star is Cliffy partners with World Vision to implement shillings worth 480 million in projects. The Cliffy County is set to unveil a new department, setting up a new department, which will coordinate all programs from donor partners and private sector to avoid duplication of projects. Okay. Mm -hmm. Governor Gideon Mungaro said the department will be launched soon, uh, which will be launched soon, will ensure the funds received from donors as well as utilize, are well utilized instead of different partners doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, this duplication of services, if you understand how the donor world works, huh? Mm -hmm. I'm saying this is something interesting, new, and wonderful to read because it means that you can actually get more done with the funds as opposed to be this diversity of everyone doing the same thing all over the place and it isn't being coordinated. That is, of course, if it works. <laughs> so, so uh, what's... There's World Bank. No, no, not World Bank. World Vision. There's World Vision. World Vision. There's a county government. And there are other people. And there are other donors. There are many others, right. especially in Kilifi. There are people who want to bring you water. Yeah. There are people who want to ensure that malaria doesn't bother you too much. Yeah. There are people who want to ensure that jiggers don't bother you too much. Mm. There are people who want to ensure that people who are poor get a little money so that they can stop being very poor. Yes. Mm -hmm. Etc. Ex exactly. Consolidate then, all those into. Yes. So that there's a body that coordinates all the activities. So that if World Vision is dealing with jiggers and uh, donor X, Y, Z is also dealing with jiggers, old folks, listen. Huh? Come. How about you come? Mm. We do the, yeah. Yes. Uh, the area that needs uh, our focus and attention is this, 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 and this, and this, and this. Yes. So this is how we're going to go about it. Perfect. You do your work, but this is how we're going to go about it. Perfect. Yes. I like it. Mm. Perfect. Mm. Should be the way to go. That should be the way to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, in, in, in all ways, more than one. Mm. <laughs> That's the way to go. You still have that phone of yours? Danny, yeah. Does that flip four? Yes, yes, please. Yeah? It's a lifestyle, yeah. my friend. It's a way. Get onto the flip side. You were life. all over. You didn't take a photo of the Ndegwa with the Z flip four. And yet you had it with you. But you have photos of the sign. Showing you Moroni this way. No, Koru, Koru. Because I was thinking Koru about Eddie O'War who tells us every day, I'm tuned into the show from, from Koru. Koru. So I saw Koru. I was like, wait a minute. Where had I seen it? Mm. Now, if I had taken a picture with that Z Flip 4, then you would have been able to be in Koru. You get it? Yeah. Because the phone is an experience of pictures. It's not just the picture that you see. It's the experience. It takes you there. That's what the Samsung Z Flip 4 does. Yes, yes, indeed. And you know what? Mm. It can speak to the tab ultra you know in computer uh, language uh, yes. they can speak to one another, they can yes. speak to one another. They can speak. so then i would have even just sent you the picture and said here and go. believe me what the things that i would have done with those pictures mm. god alone knows <laughs> 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 because you don't as well <laughs>
<laughs> Keep you here for more conversations coming up in the next time. We'll tell you a lot more about uh, multi choice and how you can get to watch a new documentary and docu series by John Alan Namu that is on multi choice and it's a multi choice original. Good morning, 7 a.m. Spice up your life. Good morning, this is Newswam Dennis Aseto. Defense Cabinet Secretary Eden Dwal and UDM party leader Ali Roba intensified last stage campaigns to woo Garissa Township constituency electorates to vote for their candidates during Thursday's by election. The seat fell vacant after Dwale resigned following his appointment to President William Ruto's cabinet as Defense Cabinet Secretary. Dwale enhanced campaigns across the constituency for UDA candidate Mohamed Dekubaro by meeting different groups and communities to drum up support for the former gubernatorial candidate loser, describing him as the best to take over from him. Roba led MPs in drumming up support for UDM candidate Nasir Mohamed Dalal who he described as a visionary, mature and focused leader who would bring the desired change in the cosmopolitan constituency. Manuel Abduwak Klan Sultan Dekomal Limsambul also called on the electorate and candidates to avoid any negative utterances that may trigger conflict between their supporters. The race that has attracted eight candidates is viewed as a two-horse race between Deko and Dolal who has been run up to Dwali during the 2017 and 2022 general elections. And in yet another unprecedented development in a case linking Deputy President Rigathi Gashango to proceeds of crime involving public funds from several government institutions, a state agency that seized 200 million shillings from his bank account now says it was misled to do so. In an affidavit filed at the Court of Appeal, the Asset Recovery Agency says it did not conduct its own investigations and that it relied on the Directorate of Criminal Investigations that had since reached a verdict that the source of funds in former Thera lawmakers' bank accounts was questionable and therefore had to be surrendered to the state. In the affidavit, a police officer attached to the agency and who was tasked with the responsibility to identify and trust assets acquired acquired by Gashago dubiously regretted that ARA proceeded to file an application seeking for furniture of the funds to the government of Kenya without sufficient proof that the funds were acquired fraudulently. And police in Kisumu County have commenced investigations into various incidents that have seen a number of Kenya Railways trains get pelted with stones at Moroni area along the Kisumu Nairobi rail line. According to Evans Gatembe, the office in charge of Kisumu Railways Police Station, railroad officials have reported that stones have been hurled at their trains on three different occasions, damaging windows while endangering the lives of travelers. The last incident happened Sunday between Koru and and Kibigori, but no passenger was injured during the occurrence. The incident to Gitambi added have all located down as the train snaked along Mohoroni to Hanskisumo. It's said that police have intensified night patrols in a B to dub to nab rather the perpetrators of the uncouth incident, while underscoring that police will not tolerate the vandalizing and sabotaging of the country's economic assets. And a 28-year-old man died by suicide after hanging himself in his home in Mwe, Kirinyaga County. Over yet to be established reasons, area residents say the body of the deceased was found hanging on the rafters of his house by children playing in the same compound. The children then raised alarm, attracting the attention of other residents within the vicinity who were baffled as to why the young man took his own life despite the fact that he was allegedly in good spirits during the festive season. The mode of the disease has since been moved to Kibogi Funeral Home, pending post-mortem, according to Moya West County Police Commander Wilson Koske. And a security guard was found killed outside a supermarket in Tala Market, Machakos County. Matungulu OCPD Peter Omundi confirmed the incident, saying that a group of criminals invaded the supermarket, dug through its wall, ransacked the cash deposit box before cutting away an unknown amount of money and several other items before dragging the watchman. Tala member of County Assembly Jackson Daka also condemned the incident, which comes just a fortnight after another security guard was killed outside a church in a near similar incident. Ann Katile Kialo, 
The chairperson in Tala Market said the incident happened roughly a kilometre from the nearest police station. The body of the guard was taken to Kangundo Hospital Mochuri as police begin their investigations. And Portuguese superstar Cristiano Ronaldo will be unveiled before thousands of fans at Saudi Arabia's Al Nasser Club Tuesday. That is today, according to a spokesperson, after selling a shock move estimated at more than 200 million euros. The 37 year old grade a five time winner of the Ballon d'Or arrived with his family together with media and technical staff. Club said spokesperson Al Walid Ali Muhaid. Ronaldo, who left Manchester United and a cloud after slamming the club in a TV interview, will appear at Al Nasir in 5000 capacity at Masul Pak Stadium in Riyadh today. I'm Dennis Asseto. Good morning. Spice FM, Nakuru. It's inching along slowly, slowly on Jogo Road, getting out into the city, but nothing too painful at this point. We're seeing a little bit of traffic here and there on Likoni, as you're also trying to connect with Mombasa Road. And getting onto the Southern Bypass will not be an issue. Uh, not much in terms of traffic coming off the Fika Superhighway. Actually, that's not true. A little bit here and there as you leave out a ring, also connecting with Survey, and then out towards Pangani at the underpass. Kiambu Road is starting to build up with traffic as well. We'll likely see more action today than we have seen in the last couple of days uh, some traffic also coming off landies getting into the cbd and coming out of westerns not too painful for now looks good on james gishiro as you connect to the wacky way and then heading heading into the city whether you're using the expressway or otherwise you should be fine we're seeing the most of it though happening around thicker road getting towards kiambu and then coming off of muranga road let's talk in about half hour see what it's like when we enter into traffic hour spice of m k e on twitter This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is The Situation Room. The only way to start your seven day. Seven minutes after seven. Good morning and welcome to the second hour of the Situation Room. Happy New Year. It shall be Happy New Year until what? Like June, like this. June, eh? Mm. Yes. And it's also a happy birthday to our friend Yegon. Happy birthday, Yegon. I would sing for you, but you know how it is. Please. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Yegon. <laughs> happy birthday. Wherever you are, Matu, Garissa. Where is that other place you normally go to? He goes all over Moyale, Wajir. Uh, where is this? Is, is it Wasingishu? Matu. Uh, is it Wasingishu or Nandi? Nandi, Nandi. 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 Matu. All over. Where are you today, Egon? Let us know. Happy birthday, man. And happy birthday to you. And I hope you've subscribed to Showmax because, hey, my friend, back to back entertainment. You know, with Showmax, you just get to watch. You can binge watch with Showmax because you go and choose a series and you find all the episodes in the series are there. Mm. Unless those special ones where they say, all right, the new one is coming next week, which is actually going with a global release. But if it's a series that's already there, all the episodes are there. Just sit, watch. Yeah. Nobody stops you. Even children have their own kind of series and shows as well. It's only 300 shillings a month. You can pay for your Showmax subscription via credit card and M-Pesa. And you can add to your existing DSTV subscription to get to watch Showmax. Have a Showmax festival a new year. Showmax.com or download the Showmax app on your phone or on your smart TV. And you get to watch premium content. 
it's school fee season ndu it is school fee season lots of folks are looking for that extra shilling to be able to send kids off to school in the next couple of weeks or so and kiwi saying step up and shine to give you an opportunity to be able to do that all you need to do is walk into any supermarket and buy the kiwi black shoe polish 100 ml 80 grams or you have the 40 grams whatever it is that you do you get paid for that and under the lid you will find a code that you will dial star 459 star 5 hash you send that code to the number you get instant airtime or bundles and at the same time you enter a draw to be able to win 35,000 shillings that goes towards what it goes towards school fees 36 winners from you know before uh, the new year mm. through till February 7th have an opportunity to win every week 35, step up and shine 35,000 shillings 35,000 shillings towards that, school fees mm -hmm. isn't that a beautiful thing it, it is, is. 35,000 shillings to be won mm -hmm. well let me talk about today's proverb shall I please tell us yes anyone who sees beauty and does not look at it will soon be poor you know as I was thinking about it I was looking at how do you tell the time mm. Well, you know, there are many ways of telling the time. You can mm. look at your phone. You can look at the sun. That can also help. Even when it isn't there, you can still look at it. Okay? <laughs> you can listen to your stomach. You can listen to your stomach. Mm. It, that one speaks loudly to you. Mm. You can listen to your eyes with that drooping. Uh -huh. But if you have a Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, mm. Mm, which is a health companion, a lifestyle companion, it measures your heartbeat. Stress levels. It helps you navigate your path. A charge that will last the whole day. Mm. Surely. Is that not a thing of beauty? It yeah. is. And wouldn't you agree that if you don't look at it and don't give it the attention it deserves, mm. well, it is your loss, is it not? Mm. You'd be poor. Yes. <laughs> the experience or the lack of it thereof you'll be poorer as a result of it because you'll have missed out on the experience you could have by simply having this watch, which does so much for you. Samsung Galaxy Watch? It is 5 Pro. Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. A thing of beauty. Kabisa. Yes. And all those things are interconnected. Kabisa. Watch connects to the phone, connects to the tab, connects to... Connects to you. Connects you to the world. Yes. <laughs> to your heart. <laughs> <laughs> and your pocket. <laughs> Sour. From Thursday this week, the president has asked his government to sit down and so they can have a conversation. President William Ruto will on Thursday lead his entire cabinet and other senior civil servants to a three-day retreat in Nanyuki to assess his 100 days in office amid pressure to fulfill election promises. The meeting at the fair on Mount Kenya Safari Club. Where, where? That's yeah. where they're going. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then they're going to talk about Mashida Kenya. Mm -hmm. That meeting will bring together cabinet and principal secretaries <laughs> alongside a re retinue of advisors in Dr. Ruto's administration, such as Dr. David Day, the Economic Council of Economic Advisors, Dr. Kamau Thuge, who is a Fiscal Affairs and Budget Policy, and Dr. Augustin Cheruyot, Economic Transformation Secretariat. Multiple interviews with CSS and PS has revealed that the retreat will focus on finding a formula to arrest the high cost of living. The president wants to align his team on what to do for Kenyans. He is very much worried about the high rate of poverty in the country, according to one CS, who added he wants everyone to play a personal role geared towards the well-being of Kenyans and he's been saying that he's given us an opportunity to change livelihood so that in the next 15 to 30 years, our children and grandchildren will not go through what people are going through today. He's saying, no, let's meet. Let's have a conversation. The nation says they've also established that the CSs and PSs will be under tight schedules that will be running from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily with the members of the advisory council led by Dr. Ndei taking them through the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto one by one tick by tick establishing gaps and what needs to be turned around quickly during the retreat each ministry is expected to outline its agent agenda for the year and how they plan to deliver them at a time when president ruto has come under sharp criticism from azimio's uh, raila odinga for giving kenyans a raw deal in his 100 days in office mm. so now should we start counting one 100 days after this retreat then well, you do know how I determined I was going to count my days, don't you? Yours were from when the, when PSs, the PSs were sworn in. Yeah. Yes. 
But now you see the PSS and the, P and the, and the CSS will now be meeting for the first time now, this time from Thursday. No, Maybe this is the time when now the government will be meeting. No. All of them. PSS, CSS, Dr. Ndei, and no. Dr. Sinchiru no, 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 Now it's time to get. start working. The entire no. government now sits and says no, now this no, is no, our focus. No more freebies. Oh, you're done? No, no, no. I'm done because mm. one of the things that the government systems, especially this Kenyan one, let me mm. speak of it from what I have been told anecdotally. When someone is appointed, there's a committee. Remember, immediately after the election, mm. we had heard from the head of the civil service, mm. okay? One Mr. Joseph Kinywa. He and his team, you know, people don't just chance upon these things. Even when you're president elect, they walk you through stuff so you know when you're El Presidente, these are the things that are expected of you. Uh -huh. Okay? If you're walking with a bit of a bounce, you reduce the bounce. Okay? If you're walking as though you're marching, you stop marching and you saunter. Whatever it is that they do, but they tell you. Same with ministers. Same with PSs. Before you sit on that chair and start feeling the warmth, you are told. So you know. That's why I said, once those guys get into office, by the time you get into office... All these things happen even before Parliament does their thing to tell you, okay, go ahead. So they know what they're supposed to do. So I am not giving any freebies. I started counting from that day. If they're meeting to assess how they're doing, that's okay. And I'm told that particular place affords an atmosphere in which you can discuss things very seriously. It can allow you, your mental capacity to flow freely. Very, very, very mm. free. It's mm. nice and cold. Mm. It's far from Nairobi. Mm. Okay? And you just can't enter willy-nilly. Okay? Mm. So... Petitioners and people who want to be assisted won't be able to go in. So let the PSs and the ministers get their ducks in a row or geese in a row or peacocks in a row, whatever it is. I hear there are peacocks there. Yes, there are. Mm. <laughs> there. Let them do so. Okay? And then come back and not tell us. This time we want to see because we've been told mm. and we keep being told and we know. As for the manifesto, it's available. It's been read. I haven't read it. But the truth is this. Whatever they're supposed to do, they know. The encumbrances that they have right now are real. You have debts to pay, you have salaries to pay, and then you have a government to run. And, and you have promises you made. Yep. Mm. So that, they have their work cut out for them. But see, the thing is, eh? like you've said, the, the, the reality that they will be sitting there to face is... Number one, we are entering into a new year and the economy. The IMF, is it IMF or World Bank, one of those two Bretton Woods institutions it's has already said that uh, almost half of the countries in the world are going to enter into a recession this year. Yes, which means they're already in a recession. Yeah. Yes. And if you look at our debt situation, if you look at the amount of money that we ought to be generating as internal revenues, the president is saying he'd like us to increase that to 3 trillion shillings and then go into 4 trillion shillings. He said he hopes that we can raise 3 trillion shillings in the, within the next one year. Pipe of a dream. <laughs> 2 trillion. <laughs> From where? From who? How are we going to get into that situation where they go into into Nanyuki, they discuss the reality that they are facing, and then they come out and actually implement it. One of the first things that the president said is he wants to see us cutting back 300 billion shillings from the current financial year's budget. Okay. Have you heard or seen anything from the National Treasury on whether the 300 billion shillings is going to be reduced? First of all, ask the simple question, have I seen anything being cut Anywhere. Have I seen any government activity that is diminished in terms, in, in terms of time and scope? No, I haven't. Perhaps you have. I, I haven't. So has a supplementary budget been taken to Parliament to say, okay, so this is what we want to do. So in our supplement, so part of the money that you had appropriated here and here and there, let's change that. So we can reduce the outlook of each of these departments to only focus on this and that. But to look at the people who are facing starvation. We've had a failed short rain season in the country. So that means the hunger that people are witnessing is going to continue this year. It's we are real. starting in hunger. It's real. We are starting with increased uh, money that we ought to pay for the debt. Right? We, 
we are starting with increased fuel prices, which means we are starting with increase of everything that we utilize in this country. A global recession that will definitely affect all of it us. It has to affect us. There's no question about it. You see, the, if you look at what we have hmm. and you look at the contribution of the citizenry, the citizenry have done their part. Yep. They pay their taxes. Now, the talk about what needs to be done and how it's going to get done, all that talk I understand, but is there an alignment of thought which is supposed to provide deed, meaning all these people who are in these lofty positions that are now meeting, are they all of the same mind? Do mm. they have the same purpose? Are they people who, given the charge that they have with their various ministries, are they going to do what they're supposed to do or are they going to do what we've seen being done in the past? Mm. A plan is made, a discussion is made, money is allocated, and then you start asking where on earth the money went to. And even as you ask that, I'm here saying that uh, it is very unfortunate that we have to ask the question. It is very unfortunate that there has to be a doubt in our minds that a systemized government, will it actually work? That a government that is supposed to have a system of operation, that the question then begins to be, will we see misappropriation of funds? Will we see mismanagement of administration duties? Will we see that? For some economies, for some countries, there's never a question as per, will people actually do their job? It's, it goes without saying that once in that position, you know this is what you're supposed to do. And here we are, imagine, the truth of the matter is that even as people go out to this, uh, it's, you said it's Lodge, Abbey Club, mm. even as people go out here, the trepidation that is met on the hearts of many Kenyans today is, oh my God, will the work that is supposed to be done actually be done? Will people who sit in these offices actually make sure that the work <coughs> is done and mm. done well? Will money be appropriated? Will money then be used for what it is set out to be? Will the budgets then that have been come have been brought out, will they actually be will they be actualized? Will they be absorbed? Should it be that those are the questions that are being asked of a government? Should it be that that is the question that is asked? Should it not be an assumption that because you are in this position, the next is like one plus one equals two. That the next thing is very clear. Yep. That you will do your job. The thing is, the question you should be asking is, will we? How much further than last cycle will we go? Not will you do your job mm. or how much will we lose? It shouldn't be the question that's being asked. It should be how much more further will we go in this cycle than we did last time? But the truth of the matter is that we're here asking and hoping. Imagine you're saying a silent prayer in your heart. Yeah. That the work will actually be done and they will not lose any money as a government. You know what we are, what you I think if they go there and all of them speak the truth to one another mm. that this is where we are as a country. We are at as a country. Mm. Professor Jogunda Dongo says this is what we have at the National Treasury which will be backed by Kamau Uthuge, which will be backed by Augustin Cheruyot, which will be backed by Dr. David Day. And they say, this is the reality. And this is the reality of what we expect to face. We have people who are in dire need of food. We have to look for food to give them. Yeah. We have farmers who have not been able to actually grow and produce what they, uh, they wanted to produce. We are talking about a pro uh, input subsidies. We are talking about fertilizer and seeds and all. And we need to buy at expensive prices and subsidize that and give it to farmers so that in a couple of months time food now starts getting cheaper but in the meantime this is what we are dealing with we have people that we ought to pay we have debts to pay mm -hmm. and they're due and these debts are dollar denominated and we know how the dollar is uh, faring today so this is how much we have to pay our debts if they sit there and they tell each other the truth and they say so let's cut then our suit according to the size of this cloth. Mm. And we come out of there and all of us, all of us have got to tighten our belts. And then come and tell Kenyans, let's all tighten our belts. But they show us that they're already tightening their belts. Then we're going to follow. Kenyans are okay with actually tightening their belts. We've been, our belts have been we've tight. We've been tight for a while. There's no the thing is, left. you've got to show us, Mr. President, you've got to show us that you are willing to actually cut back on excesses and largesses of government. If we don't feel that the government is actually serious on that, then we are not on the same page. It doesn't matter how many retreats you hold. 
It doesn't matter how much you talk. If you come out of there and the next thing you're seeing is you signing a deal, I don't know to do what kind of road will be costing extra billions of shillings and we are not sure exactly whether that X billions of shillings is what is, that road is worth. You know, there's a time when you sit back and say, okay, fine, promises were made. Mm. They were not kept. Let's put that aside, shall we? Mm. Let's ask, okay, what do we need going forward? We have a population whose numbers, especially those who are in dire straits, is constantly increasing. Mm. How do we stem this tide? How do we stop people from becoming poorer than poor? How do we ensure that people actually get to eat? How do we ensure that the food production in this country is optimized? How do we ensure that the food that we have gets to reach whatever or whichever area is required? These stories of one part of the country producing more food than they know what to do with, mm. food rotting in the fields, milk being poured, these aren't pleasant stories. Talking about storage capacities, We cannot keep talking about maize farmers who have maize and then the next story will be they have maize that is rotting in their stores. Mm -hmm. Essentially, this food security that we keep talking about, tell us what it is that's going to be done. First of all, protect the farmer. Mm -hmm. Protect these people who produce the food so that the food production in this country can do what it's supposed to do. Then let's move forward and tell us how it is we are going to ensure that the Maninji has more money in his pocket. Then tell us, when the Monenchi has more money in his pocket, the Monenchi is able to do more. Yeah. So this money that you want to collect, you will be able to collect it. Yeah. But if the government continues to borrow from the banks at the rate that they are doing, that money that the Monenchi would be given will not be given to the Monenchi. So even as the government tries to collect more money, the truth of the matter is they will not be able to collect more money. Now, as Eric puts it, we are willing to go by what we are told, but everybody must do their bit. The citizenry are already doing their bit, mm. and they continue to do their bit. This, it's, it's, we are at a time when wo what we all expect is a positive message from the government. And the positive message here is you can clearly see, yes, the government has reduced on what we perceive to be excess, excessive consumption by government or excessive expenditure by government. If you feel that yes, we are all in this same boat, then we shall move forward. But just like people are angry, okay, so you'll come and tell us all these things that you want to say. You've already increased, there's a new excise uh, tax that comes in back actually, just been reintroduced, what had been removed as part of the, uh, the, COVID, uh, the COVID measures. Yes. Uh, mobile transfer from bank to M-Pesa, excess duty is back. We were talking about the cost of electricity. We'll be discussing that at 8 o'clock. The president is saying, no, 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 no. People, just relax. Mr. President, so you can tell us it will not go up, but then come on, don't tell us it will not go up. Tell us how it will go down because it's already up. People who are spending money, I saw someone who was actually complaining, but spent 5,000 bob to buy Token. electricity tokens. Mm. They got tokens worth less than 2,000 bob. Mm -hmm. Like the rest that. is taxes. Uh -huh. Yes, uh -huh. yes. But even if you look at your own electricity bill, every time you get a bill, whether it's four or five or ten thousand shillings, look at what it is you are actually consuming. Yeah. For me, I'm going to whittle it down to that. Yeah, absolutely. You have to walk the talk. It cannot be that we're saying yes, we want to do this austerity measures having mm. been put in place, and then you take and this is why you see folks commenting about even this morning. Mm. Then you're taking folks to a swanky hotel where the bill is going to be huge to sit down and talk about <laughs> how you want to cut back on government spending in order to put more pockets in the hands. And of you're going to the most exclusive of five stars I mean, hotel. Get out of here <laughs> to put money in the pockets of. In the, of Kenyans, but the money that you're going to spend to have these discussions, we're probably not going to know what that budget looks like. Those are some of the things that we are talking about. Can it be done? It absolutely can be done. Just two months. There's a state lodge a, in Nyeri, mm. in Sagana State Lodge, right? They can yes. meet there. But well, you don't have so to people spend can say, all right, but where, where are all those people going to sleep? You know, Sagana State Lodge cannot accommodate no, it doesn't the entire have to, size it? of government. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so. Does everybody have to go? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, actually, when you think about it, 
Then can they meet in Nairobi? Yes. This this KICC. They can, meet they can even meet Nairobi. at state house. Set up a tent. So we see set tents all the time. Yeah. Hmm? Set up a tent. Just go in there at 6. Are you saying that if you're meeting in Nairobi you can't talk? You can talk very well. Yes, you can. Cuz you just can't walk into state house. And this you? is what I'm talking about because we we can apply some humor to it now which in sometimes diffuses the situation but that's the truth of the matter that how serious are you about getting this thing done and i'm going to use the example of a home when a ho- and look at the the basic unit of society which is a f- which is a family mm. look at that basic unit when they have when a family has issues and they say look we're going to have to cut back there is nothing like okay so now let's go on holiday to figure out how we're going to cut back and then come back and now start to apply those things no you start from the get go mm. and these are the people in whom you're hoping will put some confidence in you isn't it yeah. kenyans who are watching you have these conversations from thursday up until sunday up until monday up until whenever watching you live a lavish lifestyle even if it's for those 3 days and then you're telling the same kenyans that to have confidence in you about how you want to put more money in their pockets about how you want to make sure that the cost of living is going to go down how you have to walk the talk and when we talk about participatory governance this is it as kenyans are watching these things happening what summonses are you making what questions are you asking and saying hold on a minute you want to say you want to reduce the cost of living You want to make it easier for children to go to school? You want to make it so that more doctors are hired? You want to make it so that more teachers are hired? 30,000 teachers need to be hired this month. Mm. This January that we're talking about, they need 100,000. They're only hiring 30,000. Do they have the money as we speak? No. Are we probably going to spend the amount of money that it's going to cost to pay 30,000 teachers for a month in Sagana State in 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 Fairmont Hotel? for four days that you can use to pay 30,000 teachers for a month think about it like that <laughs> remember the uh, when government people meet uh, government people are given per diem it's out of town okay per diem for cs and ps is, is the highest eh? okay so there's per diem that's going to be given to these people where uh, there's an allowance a sitting allowance there is the costs of they actually work there. being a comedy of course they'll all dry and they're not pulling No. It's everybody. not a bus that it is everybody with their entourage of motor vehicles the with their wheel 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 wheels <laughs> back and front. Wheel 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 to cap yes and end up with CS and end up uh, Fairmont. They sit there for the 3 days. Plus it's not just the CSs and PSs who will be in these meetings. No. Nope. The attaches of yes. assistants All right. and drivers. Their assistants and everybody else will be there. All those allowances that are going to be spent for these 3 days of a retreat to discuss the tough economic times that we are beginning the year with and what we need to do knock me over with are they going to have a conversation that is actually based on truth truth the fact that you can have a meeting in such a place begs the question mm. are you really in touch with the reality of, of this country no are you serious about the things that you're telling us <laughs> no you got, and that's the question these things that you're saying are you really serious about them or does it just sound sexy oh you know now that we are in government want to make sure that we do everything that we can to bring down the cost of living are you serious about it do you know what is really happening let me tell you guys something the drought that we've been harping about mm. is still ongoing oh yes it's still happening today Mm-hmm. There are people who are hungry still today. No, the numbers yep. are increasing by the way, eh? Still today. It isn't yep. that it has gone down. Isn't so are you really are serious about the things that you're saying? Don't mock Kenyans. Don't mock Kenyans. Kenyans honestly, speaking for somebody who come from outside looking in, Kenyans are some of the most I don't even know what the word to use that you can beat them down over resilient. and over oh, resilient. Thank you. You beat them down over and over and over again and they'll still stand tomorrow and say we'll hope that it'll get better are you serious about the things that you say are you serious and that's the question that must be asked even you do you see the people who are coming in to lead you to hope that life gets better do you think that they are taking this thing seriously at our monyewe surely you know let's take a break let it's 27 minutes to 8 let me tell you about the last door the last door is a new investigative series that's coming up on uh, go tv It's been done by John Alan Namu the celebrated journalist. You want to know more about it? Well, I'll tell you more about it. The Lovers of Cold Cases, Mystery and Solving Crime, DSTV and Maisha Magic Plus brings you The Last Door, which is Kenya's first ever local true crime 
documentary series. Join the legendary investigative journalist John Alan Namu as he seeks to follow and reveal hidden or unacknowledged truths about infamous crimes that were perpetrated in Kenya. Don't get passed over by this show. Get and stay connected to DSTV. Get ready for the premiere of The Last Door, which happens on Sunday, the 8th of January, 2023, at 8 p.m. Dial star 423 hash to pay for your DSTV package and get a free upgrade for this. This one showing on what? Maisha Magic 26 to 8. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Meet the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 series with the new Epic Standard for tablets. The Galaxy Tab S8, S8 Plus and S8 Ultra come with a brand new S8 pen so you can power your creativity and take your productivity to the next level. Featuring the fastest chip ever on a Samsung Galaxy tablet, you can be sure of lightning fast speeds when you play or work. Connect your Tab S8 to your other Galaxy devices for a seamless continuous experience. Available in select Samsung stores countrywide. Cloudy conditions in Nairobi at 16, highs of 21 today, and we'll see highs of 21 as well in a sunny Nakuru at 16. It's 15 and cloudy in Nyeri, highs of 20 and lows of 11, and we'll see lows of 11 as well in Eldoret, where it's sunny at 14. It's 26 and partly sunny in Mombasa, highs of 31 and lows of 24. And looking into Malindi, 26 and mostly sunny conditions going to highs of 31. It's cloudy at 20 in Kisumu, highs of 28 and lows of 19, and it'll go to highs of 25 in Kakamega, where it's cloudy at 20. 18 degrees and cloudy in Kampala, highs of 27, and we'll see highs of 31 in a partly sunny Dar es Salaam at 28. 17 and cloudy in Johannesburg with highs of 24. It'll come down to lows of 15. Hamatan in Lagos at 22, highs of 33, and we'll see highs of 31 in a cloudy Kinshasa at 24. Chilled Spice. Continues this morning, uh, looking at a bit of it coming off of Likoni, and it connects with Enterprise in terms of what's coming off Lunga Lunga. In and outbound traffic, snaking steadily into the city. Uh, taking a look at the Thika Superhighway, unfortunately, three accidents have happened today. One near Utali Hotel, um, one also a little bit further ahead, and that brings that number to three be very careful there is a lot of mist coming off um low visibility slippery roads so please be extremely careful this accident has been uh, deemed a serious one so let's just watch out for that if you're heading into that direction please take it easy and find an alternate route uh, such as the service lanes coming off of the thicker super highway use that as an option um whereas are we looking at traffic not so much coming out of westland a little bit here and there coming off from gong road but manageable at least for now let's talk on spice of mke on on Twitter, let us know what's going on, where you are. Keep things moving this morning. Are you ready? Okay. Spice FM. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. This is the situation. This is Kenya's biggest conversation. A happy new year to you if you're just joining us. Yes, we're back. We're here until the end of the year. 352 days to go. Huh? Hmm? 362. Hmm? Okay. To go. Okay. Yeah. Yagan says, I wonder if those resolutions couldn't be decided at State House. How do you motivate a CS who's been in work just for three months? Kwani Moral. What should you motivate what, somebody? What, what on earth is that? <laughs> what are we talking about? Mm? Why no, should no, they be no, motivated? No, no. It is not for motivation. This one is just for, you know, getting all ducks in a row. No, no. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> look, it's not as though one is jumping on the necks of these executives of the country. Mm. But there's a culture that is developed over time where it looks like we are thanking people for doing the job that we appointed them to do. What are, It's your job. Even as you took, oh, when you when you accepted to take the job, you accepted, mm. you applied for it. Mm. 
whether you went through the Public Service Commission or whether you are a politician who did whatever it is politicians do to get appointed, you worked for it. You, you wanted uh, it. Yes, exactly. What did you think it meant? So, so, so what are we thanking you for? What are we, why are we motivating you to do your job? Why? Uh, you and you are going to miss him. Uh, well, yes, I hope he's listening. Uh, because he's, 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 Yes, I miss No, no. No. Try it. <laughs> the retreat is not to motivate. Yes, it's to go and work. It is to go and work. It is to go and get the agenda right. The retreat and to have the plan. The retreat and each, points. Each state department is coming here with a plan. What is it that you want to do, and how do you want to do it? And then they all talk and say, "Yes, so this can be done. This cannot be done. This can start as priority. This cannot. This is not priority." So let's all align our priorities okay. for the first half, the first year, the first two years into the fifth year. Okay. Uh -huh. Eric, I will go with what you're saying. Mm, so go. let's take the view that it's absolutely necessary for the sort of atmosphere that we believe is found in that Fairmont establishment mm. is a sort that enables one to come up with decisions that will move the country forward. Is that not so? Yes. Okay, now, if that is the case then, what then will success look like? Let's look ahead and ask the question, so after this meeting, what should we expect to see? Okay, forget the expenses, it's necessary. Yes. Because given the problems that we're in, in the absence of such luxury, it isn't possible to come up with plausible solutions that can actually work. Okay, we've agreed. Mm. Good place to be, good place to discuss. In fact, three days, perfect timing for everything. Okay? Yes. Now, what should we then expect to see? Because we've paid for you to be there. Per diem, the way I understand, is normally given to you so that you can find your own accommodation and pay for it. That's what the per diem is, is intended for. Mm -hmm. But the, our culture, we pay as for... As long your, as you're out of yes, town. Accommodation, we pay for you, then we give you money again to pay for the accommodation which and you already paid for. <laughs> and we okay? give you a sitting allowance. Yes, and then... And that per diem is also supposed to cover the travel cost. But we've already given you a car that is fully fueled. And then we've given you assistants who are going to do all sorts of... Look, fine, let's leave that aside. Okay. The expense has been justified. It is necessary. This difficult task of getting the country on track so that we achieve the things that we were promised yeah. requires such a, an atmosphere, such an ecosystem. Okay, I've accepted. It requires. And then what should we expect? Because it's an investment we've made. It's a crystallized plan for the government for the year 2023. Fine. So what should we expect to see? See, that's what I've said. The retreat between January 5th and 8th will crystallize the implementation program of the administration's plan for 2023. This is according to State House spokesperson Hussein Mohammed. And what did he say again? They are going to crystallize the plans for this year. What on earth is that? See, uh, it's crystallization. And you, and you, the smart What are you not you, understanding? You, 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 under, the, you is understand what, is, what <laughs> this guy has just said. What are you not getting? Is it the crystallization of the plan? Yes. Or 2023 that you're not getting? No, no, no. I, every, every, every state department no. has, a plug, has a program, right? So you're all sitting there and saying, this is the agenda. Is it aligned to the manifesto? Manifesto is number one, number two, number three. Just like we've been told in this story, Dr. Day and the others will be saying, this is what is contained in the manifesto. And if we look at the manifesto, then these are our priorities. This is where we shall begin, and this is where we shall move from that point. So they basically, I, I have no issue, by the way, with the retreat, with them sitting and discussing, this is our plan. How do we implement this plan? Maybe the, the thing, like, and a very good question you're asking is, what exactly is coming, is going to be the output yes. of this meeting? Yes. Right? And I'm sure they have an output for that they've agreed on. What is it that we that should expect to see? That's what now we should be asking. So what exactly shall we be told at this the end of this? This what is it? What's it going to be? Mm. Will it be published? Will it be gazetted? Will it be like a program that will be then pre be presented to parliament and be told by the leader of majority, this is what the government is saying it wants to do this year? And in the first quarter of the year, yeah. these are the things that we are going to do. With regards to the hunger situation and blah, 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 this is what we are going to do. Mm. Step by step, blow by blow. In the health sector, this is what we are going to do. Not what we are going to talk to you about what we plan to do. No, what we are going to do. Now, when, if I'm told that, I will tell them, why don't you go back again to Mount Kenya mm. and discuss this thing again? Because this Mount Kenya seems to be a good place which produces good results. Mm. There will be no issue. In fact, I will recommend they go to Kilimanjaro. I'd because like to go a step further. Yes. 
you can have a discussion and then you can come out and tell us what it is that you have agreed that you're going to do. Yeah. For me, that still doesn't hold any water mm -hmm. until I actually see that these things have actually been done. You can have a plan, but a plan remains a plan until it's implemented. Mm -hmm. It remains strategy until it is put to use. It just remains that. You see, with a roadmap. It just remains a piece of paper. A roadmap you can have, but until you put the vehicle on the ground and start to move, it means nothing. True. It is a map that you leave in storage and it will gather dust and it will look nice and it will have everything that you need on it. But until you put it into action, it means nothing. And I think that has been the perennial problem that has dogged many countries. It continues to dog Kenya. An implementation problem. Now, this is not to put the cart before the horse and say that we're setting up these fellas to fail. That's not, that's not the case. But we have historical experience where there have been plans, where money has been spent, and then folks have not implemented the plan that they had. And my hope, my hope beyond anything else, is that as they sit there for those three days, and like you said, absolutely, if it's something that you need to do and we actually see results, oh, 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 oh by golly, go three times a year. In fact, go four. To actually see these plans come to life, and that truly the development of the country then can be pegged to these plans that you sit down and make and actually implement. My goodness, please go as often as you can and get it done. Mm -hmm. But for me, that is the fear. That these conversations we have, these plans that you sit, then will not be brought to life and they will, they will not be done. And people can say, well, why do you have such a negative attitude? Why? Because it's historical experience. <laughs> It's historical experience. You've been have, here long enough. Uh, uh, uh. Now, people have planned and they've talked and all these lofty things. And, 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 and then you come back and guess what? Boom, it's August. And you're like, oh, hold on a minute. What happened? Before you know, it's 2025. And then we start to campaign again. And all those things that you've done before, <laughs> out the window. You know why I talked about that the road for me window. is the thing. Mm -hmm. And it's further than coming out on the podiums of the different 22 ministries and saying, this is what we said we, we are going to do. No. Too many things to do no. will not be done. No. Do if they, it. If one, they just reduce it into one. come and say, we are going to focus on these four things. Yeah. But now they can't focus on four things because already their manifesto has five things. Honestly speaking, mm -mm. where we are right now, if you just take one, but do they can't take one. But they, they can't take what one. What would it be? If you, if you were to take one, what would they, they can't it be? It can't one. be housing. It can't be healthcare. They can't take it one. It can't be no, feeding the people today. It, you it, as Eric in your ministry. Mm. You as CT in your ministry. Focus on one thing. Of the plethora of things that we get it are driving you crazy that need to be done. We know they need to be done. Whether it is dregs from the previous administration or the realities that are hitting you in the face as a CS today. Say, let us even take one and apply. Even as you try to, you know, play catch up with these other ones. And you say, we're going to take this one and we're going to say we're going to finish. And we're going to start and then we're going to finish it. Or at least get it on its way. But then you have your hands opening many lids. There are many pots boiling here and there. And then you end up not finishing any meal. But those pots aren't really boiling, are That's they? The I problem, mean, these pots man. are being spoken of. Do something. You know... Before the elections, remember we were talking about the accountability factor with regards to elected leaders. And uh, I was talking of a roadmap with this in mind. Mm. If you tell us that in the first quarter, this is what Ministry XYZ, as you have, play, uh, as you have said, will at least, this is what they're going to set in motion. Mm -hmm. So we know, we, I know what I'm expecting to see. Mm -hmm. Now, then I'm in a position to judge. The lofty broad statements don't give you anything, as Nada. you correctly put it. That one, uh, we, 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 we are no longer, we, there is no forward movement. <laughs> However, when it is stated and there's an element of clarity to what it is that we have heard, and we say, oh, this is what is happening, this is what we are planning to do. And why I'm saying I have hope, on a daily basis I can ask, this thing you said will be, I can measure, quarters, yeah. four months, yeah. okay? Mm. So if I take this, it's like this expressway. We saw it being built, so we could talk about it. Now they kept saying it'll be finished by this month, and we could see clearly it won't be. <laughs> we knew this, this at June, forget June. Mm. You didn't need to be a clever, I don't even need to understand engineering. It mm. was clear. Mm. If it has taken you this long to get here, mm. and that you're then telling us 
that just by simple deduction that you need X number of months to finish it, mm. it won't be possible. Mm. And as we speak, it's still not complete. It isn't complete. How about that? Eric, you ask, you ask the question, I thought, think about it. Okay, so what would you suggest? Okay, for example, this huge, huge ministry that now CS Morkomen is handling. Mm. How about you say, finish the ones that you started even 15 years ago. Don't start anything Don't new. Don't start anything new. Please. Just complete the ones that have been waiting 15 years. Gong Road never finished. I will tell one you one. Enzio Bridge. The killer. Finish. Enzio the Bridge. The killer bridge. In A Wingy. year. Not finished. In Mwingi. We're still Sta- waiting. Just start with that one. Just Even just, finish that can one. Can you just at least do that Finish bridge. that one. Okay, finish that one. This under road that they've been talking about where 9 billion shillings now flew into the stratosphere. Oh, mm. yeah, finish it now. The road that leads to... Karen. Ka- fi- okay, finish That's them. Don't a, that that uneven touch. section uh, where you're driving, you suddenly encounter dip yes don't even f- don't Mau even do new finish. projects mm. lord where planes are competing with cattle mm. as an airstrip stroke airport okay finish it finish F- just finish them do you know that will give you and this is just roads we're talking about we're not talking about other things infrastructure i don't know Mm-mm. Just roads. Just roads. Mm. Finish those ones. If you want to go to the Ministry of Health, okay. You know what? Let water be running. What water? In hospitals. Let water be running in hospitals around the country. Only. Only. Do you know how many things you will be able to sort out because you have running water in health facilities across the country? Just put water. Okay. For schools, if you want to go to the Ministry of Education, the thing, just p- where do you want to start? Just even pick one. Take children to grade seven. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Don't come and tell us how, oh, we are going to do, uh, which country did what, want to now and, start emulating Denmark. And we're going to build 42, like, 47 yeah, new yeah. dams. No, 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 don't. No. A, a giant. The one don't, that don't. you have, the one that you have is looking at you. Just mm. finish projects that are waiting or even try to streamline things a little bit. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. These grand lofty ideas, they're very nice. But you know what? Finish the ones that you have sitting in your hand. Do them. I, app- I would, and I am sure, let me tell you guys, Kenyans will even applaud you to say the ones that have been sitting there for you and that you have been the one who has streamlined this thing and has even finished it. Ah, don't bring anything new, man. Pangani, oh, finish the Pangani houses. Hey, where do we want Just to start? Finish. Finish it. Just, Just finish, finish it. those ones. Be the one that came and finished projects. <laughs> Be the one that came and finished projects. Don't tell us about, oh, we want to be world class. Nothing. World mm. who? Where? World class what? And people are hungry here today. No. Fill your barns. Fill your barns with food. Let it be that at the end of 2023, you have a surplus. With what you have, fill your barns. Send your children to school. Finish the road infrastructure. Let people be able to take, be able to take product to market without getting stuck on the road for three days. Do it. Expand your roads. Finish your roads. Don't talk about some grand plans that don't we'll, we know will bear no fruit. Benchmarking, going to Denmark. Stop it. The ones that you have here, do them. And that is what I hope will come out of this. That President William Ruto seems to have a plan that he hopes people can follow. And for me, these grand and lofty ideas, let them come later. Finish the ones that you have. You can't be talking about grand plans when your people are hungry. Stop it. Do you really see a situation where that entire group of executives can be of one mind? Yes. Yeah. It can happen. Mm -hmm. And how would this miracle occur exactly? Because there's one document. They're all reading from one Follow document. the document. It's a plan. There's one document. It's a plan. Remember, according to President William Ruto, the manifesto is not a manifesto. It's the plan. That's what he called it. Do you know? It's the plan. And it has crystal clear issues that it says, okay, so our plan is focused on this, 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 and the other. So basically, everybody who's been hired has been hired to implement this plan. You may have a different mind on how you want to go about it. And that's why you sit for three days in a retreat yes, but so all of you can is, agree this is the route we are going to take yeah you think we should go to mombasa through uh, going to thika first and then we go to Mwingi, and then we go, it's okay but how about this uh, no all of us have agreed we are going to go down mombasa road yeah. mm. this is how we are getting to mombasa so yeah. you don't come and tell us you know i got to river nzu and, and i found I that bridges that is no 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 all of us are going using this, this way and we're using sgr the Madaraka Express. Get there at 6.30, board the train, and we'll be in Mombasa in the afternoon. And if you're not boarding, you're not coming. Are, are 
leaving at the same time arriving at the same time that's it that's why they are going to to to, to fair on mount kenya safari club for three days and me i'm, I'm whatever saying, mind you have it's okay <laughs> come you there. get onto the train and i'm saying my hope is that when you leave this place it is not another month sitting down and say <laughs> we came back and what we discussed it no that you leave that place and this train that, that you get on the train and we are moving what then happens with people who exhibit a different mindset because they will be then this is what the plan not, is and then yeah. someone comes up with the only bright idea mm. that they and their 10 best friends have come up with that is why there's a plan there's a plan and yeah. that's why there's a leader all right and the leader's job is to make sure that everybody is whipped into this one plan and, and if you're unwhippable then you're not on the team yes i am focusing uh. my attention now on those who will be unwhippable when you have a government such as the one we have mm. that are being hounded by so so many issues the one issue that will run interference with all these wonderful plans are the thing we keep talking the things we keep talking about in this studio day in and day out the self interests mm. i'm telling you because the moment you're talking about a plan you're talking about a budget the moment you talk about a budget you're talking about money and that i think this is the best time the best time for president william ruto okay because at this point everybody is remembering that they were just hired they were recently recruited by the boss so they owe everything to, to the, the boss. boss so they're listening to the boss so this is the time and we are away f- some time away from the next election so all these other interests and all are not coming into play the politics he has the goodwill he has the goodwill from the people if the president came out today and said you know people like he is speaking he is speaking to us on new years he is speaking to us every time he speaks he's got the goodwill of the people when he comes out and says you know what i mean this and the other people are listening to him people are, are oh, saying okay okay maybe they're giving yeah. him time so he has that goodwill from the people and he has the whip very strongly and no a tight leash on his cabinet and his pss they are still new in office and they all owe their allegiance to him right now Let, so this is the time for him to actually hold that leash properly and tell them guys this is the direction we are taking that's what he'd like to do my problem mm. is with something very very it's not even salient it's just something that is obvious and clear about human nature the change that occurs when people are in positions of power mm. they all start off with very good intentions and with promises then they sit on that seat have you ever seen the office of a ps Have you seen the office of a minister in mm. this country? Mm. That office can change you. Just sitting in that office. Mm. Because before you get to that office, first of all you start off with some office where there's some individuals, some administrators. Then there's a waiting room. Mm. You know, you haven't gotten even to the PA, eh? Then you get to the office. And by the way, when you get into the office where that person is sitting is over there. Mm. It's not at near the door. There, quite far away. They see you as you walk in. Precisely. Mm. we look after our officials we actually look after them very well i am simply saying that human nature being what it is people have this knack and this capacity for convoluting the very thing you've said and feeling but it is us who give this president his job mm. with all the support that we give him we put him here we put him here some say but you know if i hadn't done this if me and my people had not done this what is he talking about so they come with their yes there is this master plan mm-hmm. but then there is the personal agenda and then there is the illusions of power that are accompanied by the reality of that seat it is easy to forget that you are appointed it is easy to forget that you are given that particular job and it is even easy to forget that you owe that job to someone there people who will feel that actually it's the other way around they're the ones who are owed yes now that's where the problem comes in i do not trust human nature Not at all. Uh, no, no, no. That's true. That's true. They I mean the the likelihood that some of these even new PSs and new CSs have already started feeling Allah I've got yeah. power. It's very yes, high. Yes. Because there is power. It's very and high. And it's not just palpable, it's real. And the president understands this very well. He's been there before. And he has the whip. For a long time. He has the whip which you know Well, if the president wants to fire a PS, he doesn't need to call OAS, oh, a commission of inquiry or oh, form a task. No. No. He just needs to relinquish relieve that person off the job 
This is what I wait That's to it. see. Eric, this is what I wait to see. He has the power of the whip. If people don't follow his direction, that's it. Ultimately, the president was elected by people. And given the power. And given the power. And is accountable directly to the people. Yes. And he knows that. And that's why I say, right now he has a goodwill and he's got the power of the leash. If he uses those too well, then we shall move forward. If they go to Nini and they talk and talk and talk and those guys come back here and they're like, hey! If what they'll be doing after 5 p.m. between 5 p.m. and dinner time and afterwards is discussing that thing we were discussing today about houses. You know, I have a piece of land somewhere. Mm-hmm. If that's what they'll be discussing, we are doomed. Kwisha. Kwisha, Sisi. Done. Keep it here for more conversations. Very good morning to you. It's now 8 a.m. up your life. Good morning. This is Newswire. I'm Dennis Aseto. Elders drawn from the Kikuyu community have initiated a process to reconcile President William Ruto and his predecessor Uhuru Kenyatta. The Kikuyu Council of Elders who are leading this clamor have proposed Deputy President Rukat Kashagwa as the likely person to spearhead the meditation. Speaking during a New Year's prayer held by the elders in Alkalawa Boratum Grounds, Council Chairperson Washira Kiago noted that it was time to seek a truce between the two former allies who went separate ways ahead of August 9th general election that saw Ruto Trans Raila Odinga, who was being backed by then-President Uhuru Kenyatta. The chairperson further indicated that the reconciliation is aimed at ending political divisions that currently play out in the open among leaders from the Mount Kenya region. Even as they seek to have Kashagul lead the process, Kiago is keen to point out that the elders want the deputy president to power his differences with the former head of state. And leaders in UDA party have pitched camp in Kandara, rather pitched camp in Kandara yesterday in the final push to residents to vote for the party candidates ahead of the slated Thursday by election. The leaders led by Muranga Governor Rungu Kangata, Maragombo Parliament, Mary Waidira, and Betty Maina, the county women representative, rallied the residents to vote for Chagan Juguna as their next member of parliament. The trio said voting for the UDA candidate will be reciprocating the goodness extended to the locals by President William Ruto for appointing two cabinet secretaries who hail from the area. Kangata said Njuguna is a vibrant leader who has a huge potential and he will be able to deliver to the people of Kandara. And Prime Cabinet Secretary Musaila Mudavadi has reiterated that formation of Kenya Kwanza government following the August 9th general election was symbolic of a grown democracy in the country. Mudavadi, who is in Brazil to represent Kenya at the inauguration ceremony of the newly elected President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, mentioned that the conduct of peaceful elections and transition was the clearest indication of grown democracy in Brazil and Kenya. Lula, who previously served two terms as president from 2003 to 2010, narrowly defeated far-right incumbent Jair Bolsonaro in an October run of that capped what some observers call one of the most divisive political contests in Brazilian history. And leaders in the UDA party pitched camp in Kandara. They say that their leader, their candidate, is best suited in delivering for the residents of Kandara, especially after Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa and President William Ruto gave cabinet positions to constituents. Modern cost. Express Limited says it will continue ferrying passengers from Nairobi to Kampala, Kigali and Bujumbura routes despite a government directive to suspend its operating license. Transport and Public Works Cabinet Secretary Kipchumba Murkomen ordered the National Transport and Safety Authority to effect the ban after a bus in the company's fleet was involved in another accident in Uganda, killing six persons. 
This comes days after another bus killed one person while reversing at Makutano Junction along Kisinya Mira Road after its driver failed to control the vehicle thereby hitting a stationary vehicle owned by another cycle. It posted on its Facebook page. Modern Coast has affirmed that it will comply with the NTSC ban, adding that its local routes shall remain closed. The bus company operates the Mombasa upcountry routes and Nairobi Malindi and Nairobi upcountry routes. The company clarified that it shall continue to offer courier services. And at least 14 people died in a brazen armed assault in a prison in the Mexican border city of Juarez. The Chihuahua State Attorney General's Office said that 10 security guards and 4 prisoners were killed and 13 others were injured. The incident began when gunmen in armored vehicles arrived at the prison and opened fire on security personnel. Authorities said inmates took advantage of the situation and 24 prisoners escaped. Ciudad Juarez, just across the U.S.-Mexico border from El Paso, Texas, is one of Mexico's deadliest cities and an epicenter of drug cartel violence. This is Newswire. Dennis Alceto. Good morning. One hundred two point five Spice FM, Kisumu. All right, a few minutes after eight o'clock, and we're looking at traffic that's built up quite some on the thicker super highway. There have been a few accidents there this morning, unfortunately. Uh, one just past that Utali drift, and that's where you're seeing that heavy traffic. Um, and then getting out towards the Pangani underpass. We're looking at some also coming in from that drive-in junction. Uh, beyond that, though, it doesn't look too bad. It's ebbing and flowing on Kiambu Road. We're seeing some traffic building up coming out of Westlands on Waiaki Way, but James Kishuru looks pretty good. Into the city centre is where most of it will happen, coming off Kamp Kunji, as well as coming off Gong Road. But traffic this morning has not been too terrible. We'll keep an eye on things and see what it looks like in about half hour or so. We are into traffic hour proper now. Uh, it looks like we're still looking at slim pickings for today. Spice of MKE on Twitter. Keep us talking there and keep things moving. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the eight, Situation Room, the morning. only and way welcome to... Welcome to the third of the Situation Room today. How are you doing? Happy New Year. There are people who are online. And we say hello to them. We say hello to them again. Yes, okay, the, the, the new ones. Since then. Mm. Jose Mushiri is tuned in this morning. Jose Kevin wants to have that uh, electricity conversation. Happy New Year, Eric Sebastian says. Good morning to you. Happy New Year, Paul Shege and Esther Fati Rastagal. Okay, good morning to you. Uh, Bruno Kingston said he really missed us. Um, and he's we'll tuning from too. CIA. Mm. Bernard Mibosho, eh? Mishobo says good morning. <laughs> and Collins Kipsat is also tuning in. Says good to see you this morning. Mm. And Benjamin Mugo is tuning in from Kerugoya. Welcome back. Greetings to Eric specifically. Is Wesley Bewart. Wesley Bewart. And Wesley, Shiro. Happy New Year. Shiro says, oh, oh, oh. The way City would say. Uh, Happy New Year. The Situation Room. What a pleasant surprise. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Hey. Welcome, everybody. Happy New Year. New things are happening in this New Year. In fact, John Allen, John Allen Nam, who has been working on something throughout the previous year, and it's going to be launching this Sunday, the 8th of January, 2023, on Maisha Magic Plus at 8 p.m. It's called The Last Door. Okay. It's a true crime investigative series which looks at various criminal activities and crimes that have been reported in the country uh, in the past and he delves into them and says, so what exactly happened? And this is what he's calling The Last Door. 
premiering this Sunday, the 8th of January 2023 on Maisha Magic Plus. Just get your subscription through DSTV, dial star 423 hash to pay for the package and get a free upgrade on us. Just do star 423 hash to pay for your DSTV package and get it. So this is happening on Maisha Magic Plus. Ndu. Yes. It's still school fees season. It's school fees season until who knows when, mm. but Kiwi is making it a little bit easier for some folks and saying step up and shine with Kiwi, giving the chance for 36 people to get school fees worth 35,000 shillings. How do you do that? You go into any supermarket and buy your Kiwi black shoe polish in whatever size and then when you open the lid you will then dial star 459 star 5 Five hash send that code which is under the lid to that number and you get airtime or bundles instantly and also a chance to enter into the draw that could see 36 people win weekly 35,000 shillings goes towards school fees brilliant mm. city mm. from the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra mm, which can yes. connect to the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 which yes, can collect the yes. top Samsung Galaxy what? Yes. Z Flip 4. And which, which is can, accompanied by an yeah. S Pen. Yes, yes. Mm. And that when you do this, you can hear on your earbuds pro too. Eh. Uh -huh. Experience, experience, experience. The yeah. proverb. You said this proverb is from Bini. 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 B-I-N-I. Mm. Other known as Benin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Benin. Oh. Yes. Okay. Anyone who sees beauty and does not look at it will soon be poor. You are poor. Infinitely poor. By it's not okay. having looked at the beauty of these wonderful, wonderful, wonderful products. Ah, salala. <laughs> <laughs> you see beauty. You see beauty. You don't look, look at it. Yes, you deny yourself the experience of looking at it. Of understanding how it is it applies to you and mm. how it is it can enrich your life. Mm. Mm. Customer, kuana ni bure. Kuana ni bure jamani. Customer. Eh, angalia tu. <laughs> yes. Kuana? Bure kabisa. Ah, mm. yes, bure. Quote. Okay. Eh, what? Isn't the quote? Hata kuonja. Yes. Those mm. places where you taste the meat everywhere and then mm. by the time you get to the last guy, you're full. He's like, mm. bana. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> si scary. Chani wote ni anda ibini kuja. <laughs> so you've eaten, you've eaten the entire thing. You are full. Like a kilo. <laughs> you've eaten a kilo of meat. <laughs> huh? And there you are, just wondering, okay, okay. So we're still talking about the high cost of living. And, um, you know, as we uh, were heading towards the end of 2022, there were reports that, you know, the subsidy on electricity, <whistles> that was removed. So expect power bills to go up in the next couple of days. Well, power bills have been going up for the past couple of months anyway. But the president, speaking in a, at a church service on Sunday, he was at Siloam in Bamburi, Mombasa County. He said, ah, forget about it. President William Ruto says the cost of electricity will not go up, contrary to earlier media reports. Several media outlets had reported that the cost of power would rise as of the 1st of January, after the government eliminated the low-cost power electricity subsidy. Speaking during a Sunday service in Mombasa, the president explained that the government had already removed the subsidies in August last year. Hence, the electricity would cost, I mean, cost would not go up. He said, we have already taken care of all the subsidies that we removed in August. We are going to ensure our manufacturers, our value addition processors, and all Kenyans, including those on lifeline tariffs, are taken into consideration as we review the tariffs going into the future. The president, however, said that the government will not shy away from making tough decisions that will enable sustainable economic growth. I have taken a bold measure to ensure the country recovers economically by removing subsidies, which were initially a strategy deployed for political expediency for that time because we had an election. Now he says, subsidy is gone, but we will make sure that as we are reviewing the tariffs and all, eh? Power prices are not going up. Iyo ni rumors. Wachana rumors. Ya wa antu wa magazeti. Ni rumors. Ni rumors. Engineer Isaac Dereva, our friend who understands matters of electricity and power billing, is here with us. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Eric. Good to see you again. Yeah, thank you very much. Umeruka vizuri. 
Nimeruka lakini pia nimeruka excessively because uh, first of all uh, happy new year city happy new year. <laughs> happy new year my brother what i did when i was coming the year has started in a funny way mm. uh, i when i was on the express way i think some people just thought we that passing through the express way yeah. in january yeah. so i missed the turn off so i did not exit here so i had to go another 10 kilometers to be here in a kwanga hivyo you should put up some uh, some billboard saying this where standard <laughs> Otherwise, I missed that. There's a the billboard that is this big. Paul Lesana. <laughs> so you missed the exit. At so the I missed Southern the exit. Ni kaona hiyo ndio standard group kaza ma hiyo imeenda. I went and paid the uh, uko, but I told them sijasaidika but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but not by much. Karibu Paul Lesana. Paul Lesana ndo yangu. Yes. Now, deliver. Yes. Things have been happening, bwana. The last time you were here, yes. it was uh, you know to talk about the rising cost of power mm -hmm. that was just soon after you know and some 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 power bills had been reduced by 15% that was in yes end of january right yes and then later we talked about it because we were still expecting that by june yes. or was it by march by April, by march yeah by march yes. the other 15% would yeah. be implemented came and passed uh, now yeah the president is saying power is not going to go up you forget about it. power is not going to go up is power going up is the cost of power going up um sometimes i just feel for kenyans because um the promises we are given uh, it's not tied to anything <laughs> now i had uh, when i was coming i was listening to you and you're trying to explain how the president would be going on that day to nanyuki uh, try to go and get the advisors uh that kuja hapa this is what we have done in the 100 days what we need to do but i didn't hear you mentioned because probably it is not written on the papers mm. who is going to advise in matters power because uh, i was not called mm. and, and my phone has been on <laughs> i was expecting that they would come and ask uh, what is this you normally say mm. now power let me repeat what has been happening um in 2018 Kenya Power requested for tariff review. It's normally done after every three years. Mm -hmm. So they requested for some review. Mm -hmm. And now, that time, it was increased from a certain amount, it required 10 shillings, it went to around 12 shillings for a certain tariff. Okay. Just imagine that is a percentage. Okay. All tariffs are affected. Okay. But now, in 2018, they reduced all costs that are above the energy charge. They reduced all of them. In fact, to be specific, um, in... In 2018, August, all co uh, fuel cost, mm -hmm. forex, and inflation total was 2.6 shillings. Total. It came down from 7.06. They brought it down to 2.06 shillings. That is after the review. After the review. You know now what they did? Eh? They increased the money that goes to Kenya Power, mm. but then they reduced all these other costs. The money that goes that to is forex the one that they take directly government and i will say it is government that takes because it's not ipp so i will explain why mm -hmm. now they reduce that cost from seven shillings to two shillings mm -hmm. then they increased the kenya powers cost by a certain margin mm -hmm. during that time they said power cost that time uh, the director general was pavel he mm -hmm. said price in the chini power mm -hmm. Okay, people thought, ah, okay, do you know how much it reduced? Mm. By a very small percent, maybe 0.01%. Now, what happened? Ikaka, <laughs> uh, ikaka, so these other costs that were reduced to 2.06 shillings, to 2.60, they build up, they build up up to around, uh, when is this? Ikafika around uh, a time we were complaining now. You know, there's a time we were complaining in around uh, 2021 when I came. Yes. Now, it was now on top of what was increased in Kenya Power's cost. Read that there is the Kenya Power's cost, mm. and then there are other collections that the government takes from yes. the bill. Yes. So now, uh, see now the, the other cost, the forex, the, whatever they reduced to 2.6 something, started increasing. Now, it increased until we started complaining again. Remember that time, Kenya Power were trying to say, actually, we will still need another review. We still need to increase our cost by 20%. Mm. But you see, there are certain costs that nobody says increase or reduce. It is the government that decides this 2.60 will increase. Now, what happened? When we came to around January, after now the PPA um, task force report, mm. I came and told you, 
Uh, and by the way, our sources is uh, we, we we are not we don't operate on rumors because we are a registered body. Uh -huh. uh, we don't operate on rumors, so we have data that we keep, and that data and we asked. How was Kenya Power that was asking for a reduction of, uh, for an increase of 20%, how are they able to reduce? And then we found out they were given 26 billion. From the government? From the government, for eight months. And that is what I said here. Well, I remember when so I was... So was given a subsidy? A subsidy, yes. For 26 billion. That was being collected from Smipet here, from, uh, I think, either from other sources like Tuseme uh, Nikamarelek, and so several other sources. Eh? Mm. So they build up, they say that we are going to provide 26 billion. Mm -hmm. Now that government is gone. Now, the one that came decided there is no subsidy, according to what they are saying. Because, mm -hmm. of course, they are saying we need to increase power by 15% because that subsidy, subsidy is gone. It's gone. But remember, even before they say that, they increase these costs before August. The total cost for Forex inflation and uh, forex inflation and fuel cost was 5.83 now he said regarding just immediately after they came back they did not increase the money that goes to kenya power, kenya power. what they increased is the fuel cost now that fuel cost came from 4.63 so he equals seven point uh, by i think 7.2 now the total cost that goes with forex and uh, fuel cost and inflation is now 9.86 <laughs> you get so akuna kenya pesa ya kenya power it was 2 shillings and 60 yes it's now 9.86 and just about eight, 4 six. years ago yes it's now 9 bob yeah so now if you hear kenya power uh, complaining that mm. we need to be increased our and you, in, f in fact the uh, tariff review period is, is due yeah. uh, and that is why they are requesting for her uh, they normally apply to epra the review, the review, this review takes place after how long? After three, three years. years. For three years. Yes. Okay. So now. So it didn't happen in 2021. It didn't happen. Uh, there was a lot I of. Mean, uh, it was COVID time. Yeah, COVID I mean, time, all those things. Know. So now hmm? they want their costs adjusted a little bit. Kenya Power. Uh, Kenya Power. Hmm. Now, the challenge is with this cost of 9.86, which is not tied to anything because uh, uh, remember. This is all tax. It's not tax. In it's fact, tax, okay. I have so not mentioned not about tax. VAT. Yeah. Because there's, there's VAT, there's the other levies, Kenya Water Resource if Authority you those levies, ones, and all those goes. So we are only talking about the fuel charge. Yes. Uh, the forex. Yes. And inflation. And inflation. What determines, what determines inflation? Inflation, I think, is normally given by the... So it's a CBK. It's a CBK issue. All right. Uh-huh. What determines the forex? Forex, now, that yeah. is an interesting one. When we were trying to sign off uh, some PPAs mm. about 20 years or 15 years ago, yeah. the dollar was maybe 62 mm -hmm. shillings or 80. 80 shillings. Now the dollar is at 120-something. Yep. Mm -hmm. That difference is what we pay. Because those IPPs decided that we are not going to depend on your Kenya shillings because we have bought our machines and our investment and in loans dollars. have been taken in dollars. Right. So when... It always pay us in dollars. And remember, we, they collect money from consumers in Kenya shillings. Yeah. So we have to add so that. So we have to buy the dollars. So there are some that we are paying an extra, um, an extra up to around 38 shillings per dollar. So we are so, adding. So at that rate, will this debt ever be paid really? Uh, for what? I mean, if... if the money to the IPPs. Exactly. Because if, say, we borrowed, and at that time the shilling was exchanging against the dollar at 80 shillings. Yes. And now we're at 122. It is the investor. They have you signed see? a contract for 20 yes. years. So once their contract is over, like now for Savo Power, for example, which was Kipevu 2, mm. the years is over. They closed in, uh, in June of 2021. They closed the plant. They closed the plant because the contract was over. So or if they didn't pay they have, themselves... They have no new contract on them. They, they were not renewed. And there's only one person who can buy power in this country. Yes. And, and that, that is Kenya Power. And that is Kenya Power. If you don't have a contract with Kenya Power... Then you can yeah, only no, supply no. to your village. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, that being uh, Forex, uh, uh, I've told you mm. how Forex come about. Mm. That we have to add some, the difference in which the, the dollar is today. And that so basically, and we, are paying, we are paying the IPPs in dollars. In dollars. That's, that's the point. Yes, and remember, it's not all IPPs. Mm. Okay, let me say there is a, first of all, we have five mm. IPPs that are doing thermal. Mm. Then we have three that are owned by Kenjen. Mm. 
Yes. Those ones owned by Kenyan. Of course, we are paying using Kenyan. Those ones are Kenyan shilling denominated. And they only have, I think they have, keep, they only, not I think, it's confirmed that they have Kipev 1 mm. and Kipev 3 mm -hmm. and Muhoroni Gastabai. Those, Those are the only thermos. Then, uh, of course, there are some other small mini grids operated by Kenya Power, which only account for 0.7% of the generation, mm. which is very small. Uh, but now those five guys are the people who come and say, we need <coughs> you to add Forex yep. and then fuel cost. Yep. And that is the cost, if, even if you remove just about uh, a small amount, which is maybe inflation, mm. you will still have about uh, over seven shillings, which okay. is fuel is cost. There, yeah. uh, Isaac. Is there justification for this? We understand that the review period is every three years. Yes, yes. But is there justification for it? Because sometimes it's possible that somebody can say, well, we're up for review. Yes. And there may not be, need, there may not be any need for those prices to go up. Yeah. Because we are seeing that because they are the sole provider, essentially. Yeah. There's a monopoly. Whether it's designed that way or, you know, as a result of circumstance, they are the sole. Mm -hmm. Is the review then justifiable at every time because usually when somebody says well you know when there's if you look at any other sector yeah when there is a need for price review yeah it's because they've not been able to number one make ends meet or number two their inputs have become more expensive over time and so now the end user then must be the one to shoulder the cost isn't it so when they come and they say mm -hmm. it's time for us to review is it because one or two of those things have happened or you know what we just need to make some more money for the sake of it. Well, the review is actually something that is uh, actually justifiable. Mm -hmm. Number one, it's not all reviews that are to increase mm -hmm. the cost of power. And then uh, they are also given a period where uh, the, we will look at all the operations. Remember, um, through the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, it was a call for all nations to, ex to ensure universal access to electricity. Yeah. I mean, like, we are now almost uh, 76 point something percent connectivity. We are up from 25 in around 2013. Now, due to the losses and all those other increments and all that, they said, let us be sitting down and be looking at, like what you would be saying, what uh, the president is going to do in, uh, in, in uh, Nanyuki. Mm. You need to sit down and ask, well, this is what we have done, this is the connectivity, and uh, can we reduce or do we increase or do we still do maintain there? Mm. And remember, it is not them just uh, that they decide. They also apply to EPRA. Yep. Now, EPRA is a regulator. And I know EPRA has been uh, tight. They don't always, they have done several applications and EPRA has turned down. Mm. Uh, but they are, of course, justified every time to say that we have turned down because of this and that. Yeah. So, but now, uh, you remember even when they were saying we need an increment of 20%, they had applied to EPRA, and then EPRA said no. Uh, because of the economies of uh, these other things, it's going to be a bit either, it's going to be political or something. Mm. Let's just chill now. Now, the danger here is we have a new government, and the government may come with uh, and make a decision that we want Kenya Power to be profitable. Yep. Now, I don't have a problem in Kenya Power being profitable. In any case, even if they <laughs> charge 15 shillings from up from 10 or 7, provided they don't have these 9 shillings, they look at it. And le let me remind you something. I know City want to ask, what does it take to remove these uh, IPPs <laughs> in Thermos? Mm -hmm. I will tell you something that was mm -hmm. said by, uh, he was the MD Kenya Power, Ken Tarus, about mm -hmm. four years ago. Mm -hmm. He was asked in, a, in, in a, I think it was in KTN or somewhere. Mm -hmm. He was asked, what does it, how much money do we need to pay off these guys? He said 50 billion, over 50 billion. Now, let me imagine even it is 100 billion. Mm. These people, if you look at the money we pay them per year, the IPPs, yep. you would realize that it is, it is actually intentional not to remove them. Because, for example, you are paying them over, let's say, over 30% of like 20 billion that Kenya Party, for example. Every year. H how much is that? Isn't that 6 billion? Mm. Now, if you multiply 6 billion, multiply by 12, how much is that? 72. It's 72. Mm. Then uh, you just need one year to tell them, uh, on the Kenya Hub. You see? Now, the other challenge is, mm. even when they are being paid, uh, you know, we don't know how much they have uh, been paid. We know how much they generate. Yeah. Because every month we normally have a summary. Yeah. And for example, like last month and the previous month, you expect the cost of uh, the fuel cost to go up based on the generation. It doesn't go like that. Mm. 
I was here the last time I was telling you. It has been 4.63 for eight months, yet the generation has been going up and down, up and down. So it's not governed by anything. You don't use any. Mm -hmm. So right now, you realize that the generation for Thamos was actually less in November compared to the previous month. Yet the cost w went went higher. Mm. Well, what happened? Why? 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 why did they get it's less? That is what I am saying. That that money does not go to the IPPs themselves. I mean, you can't get, give an IPP something they have not generated. Yeah. So, but Kenya Power has no business. I have actually tried to talk to Kenya Power and ask them: Do you really follow this money that has been collected to ensure that it has gone to this? Because we even have so the generation. So, but it's collected each. by Kenya Power. Sorry, it's it's collected by Kenya Power. Right. Yes. But it's a pass through cost. Two. Who? I think they even give they give to the ministry or so through the Ministry of Energy yes to then pay the to then pay the various players this is uh, Garisa this is whoever uh, these are Mumias and those other guys why is the ministry paying and that the contract is with the Kenya Power well I don't think they have the mandate to it's not a direct uh, I didn't even say the ministry I don't know who pays but it is not Kenya Power. I won't, I'm only expecting it's, Kenya, uh, it's the ministry mm -hmm. because they are, I don't expect it's EPRA. I don't so, but it is not so Kenya what, Power. So do I hear you to be saying then that the role of Kenya Power is very specific? Yes. And it has nothing to do with paying the IPPs? No. It, it doesn't. So then the what is the role of Kenya Power? By the way, let, let me remind you something else. The fuel that we consume is normally given to those IPPs by the government. That is number one. Mm. Then cost? we pay the government through the fuel cost. Number two, these units generated by Thamo is specific to each station. And it is actually, there is normally even a summary that you will get in Kenya Power. Mm. But as to how much money they have been paid, you remember when the task force was asked, go and get this contract. Mm. They did not get a single contract between Kenya Power and IPPs. Yeah. And that is even John Gumi who said, that uh, I really tried to get these files. I asked them where are the contracts. So how do you expect Kenya Power to pay? Yet those contracts are hidden. So and 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 yet the contracts are hidden. Yes. But money is still we are mm. told is paid. Hey, we are paying at least. So, so it's not that the contracts are not there. Are no, non existent. No, no, no. They, they exist. Yes. Depending on who is asking, who are you? My name is John Gumi, sent by who by the president. You want what contract? Kuja <laughs> cash. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is what happened. He, they did not get that. They will just never show it to you. They were never <laughs> shown those contracts. And they will never show it to you. Yes. And remember, all those, all those contracts... <laughs> but they're remember, not the only contracts to... that yeah. have become opaque or invisible. Mm. The, SGR, the SGR contract also had similar issues. Medical, it's there, but it's also not there. contracts were also... I know you want to go to a break. Just really quickly. Is it possible that these are designed in a manner that will make Kenya continue to pay... Ad infinitum, these amounts that perhaps it's designed in a manner so that you will always be paying this amount. Is, is that possible? Is it for me? It, the question? It, it is possible because uh, every time, be, uh, actually, I'm very disappointed. This government, uh, to, uh, to be honest, this one on the previous one, one. this government that is in existing. But because been in we had for two days. 100 no. days is a long time. No, 100 days, you remember, mm. between August. And now, they have taken the cost of these three components mm. from 5 to 9.89. 9. 9. 9. Now, I'm asking... And what, this change happened since, let's say, August. President William Ruto was sworn in yes. as president? Since, since when he was sworn in, the cost of those three components have gone up by close to and 5 And the shillings. end result but is not, not as a result them? of things that happened before he came no. in. No. No, it, Wait, some, some people will say. Isaac. say fuel charge now. How is the government to blame for fuel charge? It, no, let me ask you. Or the cost of fuel you, for you, that you can, mm. you can well, check. You can check, honestly. Mm. You can check the increase in fuel cost mm. in terms of petrol mm. from uh, when the president was in. Mm. Uh, I think, uh, when say, say July, mm. when okay. we had uh, Uru Kenyatta. Okay. Mm. Up to now. What is the percentage change? Then you check what is the percentage change in, in this fuel component. energy. It's over 60%. Fuel energy charge has yes. gone up. Yes. And forex charge has gone up because of William Ruto. Uh, of course, it is when you are going to pay the, f the IPPs, eh? uh, fuel cost is, di is directly related to, to the forex to charge. The forex. But now that is not the administration. That is the market. That is what the Yes, it's not the market. Uh. It's not the market. I am saying whoever decides that the fuel cost is going to be to come and it it, it happened in one month. Remember, mm. it, fuel in the cost last just two shut months, up. 
in the last two months, that is when it has doubled. That has no... Don't always say that, oh, it is Didi Nyoro in Kenya. Remember, Didi Nyoro's shares are 0.42. Mm -hmm. That is equivalent to 18 million Kenya shillings. Mm -hmm. I don't think that is a lot of money to keep on saying it is owned. It has nothing to do with the profitability. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is money, and it has nothing to do with the IPPs. This is money that is normally taken. The IPPs are told, yeah, in your mm -hmm. Are you complaining? No. The rest, and that is why those contracts are not existing. And that is why we are also saying, give us a page, by the way, as your CSR as standard group. Give us a page every month, one page only, one day. We will be listing the various parameters that affect the cost of electricity. Is every the cost month. of electricity going up? Um, you know, it has gone up already. It has gone up by five bob. So if it is going to go, it is uh, right now. <laughs> Kenya is number three in Africa. Number three, there is Cape Verde. And then there is Rwanda. Mm. Mali was a bit ahead. What do we but now we have overtaken. We are at 26.2. In terms of the highest cost. The highest cost. Yeah, what do we need to do yes. to number one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep going the way you're going. Uh, yeah, you because I, I thought with that government, we would have expected that we are going to have like something like uh, around 15 shillings. Because they were very serious about industrializ uh, industrialization. But right now, uh. it is becoming a challenge. So when the president says we are going to make sure that during the tariff review, we are going to factor in all of those different users, yeah. it will not m change much if these costs are still high. Basically, that's what you're saying. Uh, Even if you reduce the tariff, the tariff to Kenya power, yes. if fuel energy charge, forex charge, inflation, yes. and then you bring in APRA, WRA, REP charge, if all those ones are still high, yes. it doesn't matter. It does not matter. In fact, nobody has ever come to say mm. now power has in, been increased from this. People just realize that. Why is it going up? It's because of those three. In fact, I don't mind about Warma, mm. EPRA, and uh, REP. <coughs> because those ones, they, they, they are not, you can be able to tell how they are going to be because they are constant. These are those of someone waking up they and saying fuel it. cost, nihi, inflation, nihi, forex. Nihi. That, that one, we cannot even keep track of it. <laughs> Let's take a break. It is 25 minutes to nine. Engineer Isaac Dereva is the Executive Director, Electricity Consumers Society of Kenya. And he understands matters of electricity and especially billing and billing and the components of billing. And that's what we're discussing today. Concerns of a high cost of electricity. Is there any relief on the way, as the President has promised? That's what we're discussing. John Alan Namu has been working on a new series called The Lost, The Last Door. It's launching on uh, Maisha Magic Plus this Sunday at 8 p.m. Make sure you get your subscription to DSTV and get Maisha Magic Plus on board because it's John Alan Namu and it's real crime documentary it's not a tear fiction blah blah mm -hmm. blah you know it's looking at actually something that happened and getting deep into investigative and finding out what exactly happened it was the power going up if there was crime <laughs> John Alan will insight. have it <laughs> 24 minutes to nine time for that break we'll be back shortly London Mulu DJ Absolute. When the gang is together, got the sugar, got the spice. Your other. Yes. I have missed you like uh, hot hamburgers. Yeah? <laughs> like hot hamburgers. <laughs> you know, bad boys give more money than you can count. Hey, bad boys give more money than you can count. If it's fun, it's funky, it's fresh, you're definitely going to catch it here. I don't know what you do every day from 11 a.m. to 3 o'clock, but if I were you, I'd tune in to Sugar and Spice only on 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. So if you say it's on, then it's on. Yeah. Join the flip side with a new Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4. It's packed with amazing features that will have you doing backflips, like Flexcam, which allows you to do hands-free video calling, group shots, selfies, and much more. It's beautifully designed to fit your lifestyle and fit neatly in your pocket when folded. But it's not just beautiful. It performs powerfully and it's flipping strong from the inside out. You've got every reason to join the flip side with the Galaxy Z Flip 4. Available in selected Samsung and stores countrywide. Cloudy conditions at 16 in Nairobi, highs of 21 and lows of 16. It's sunny at 17 in Nakuru, good highs of 21 and lows of 11 today. We'll see lows of 11 as well in Yuri, where it's cloudy at 15, going to highs of 20 and it's 14 and sunny in Eldoret, highs of 21 and lows of 11. 27 and sunny in Mombasa, highs of 31 and it'll go to highs of 31 as well in a cloudy Malindi at 28. 22 and cloudy in Kisumu, highs of 28 and we'll see highs of 25 in a partly sunny Kaka mega 
at 22. Mostly cloudy conditions at 22 in Kampala, going to highs of 27, and we'll see highs of 31 in Dar es Salaam, where it's sunny at 29. 18 and sunny in Johannesburg, highs of 24 and lows of 15, and we'll see hazy conditions through Lagos, currently at 22, going to highs of 32. 31 will be the high in a partly sunny Kinshasa at 24. Spice up your life. So we're still seeing a little bit of traffic building on the thicker superhighway. Uh, probably will not last for too long. Uh, seems to be opening up a little bit and Kiambu Road doesn't look too bad right now. The Pangani underpass getting into the city is where we'll see most of it, at least for now. Uh, drip drop of traffic on Jogo Road heading out towards the city stadium roundabout and then out towards Landis, which is not too busy right now. Probably not going to see much traffic build up until towards the end of the week. But fingers crossed, knock on wood, that everything will be all right. Those accidents that happened on Thicker Super Highway more or less have been cleared up. Please be careful. Slippery parts as the rain is coming down in that area and uh, visibility is poor. So please be careful. Let's not do any more accidents this morning, shall we? Let's talk on Spice of MKE on Twitter. <laughs> Spice up your life. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. Situation Room live on Spice FM and online. Our guest is engineer Isaac Ndereva. He's the executive director at the Electricity Consumer Society of Kenya. We are talking about the rising cost of power. Dereva, yes. what is REP charge, Rural Electrification Program? <laughs> Rural Electrification Program is uh, some fund that was established to be collected uh, with the bill mm -hmm. to assist those people um, who... Uh, for, for example, if you have some old folks back in the countryside, and, yeah. uh, maybe they're having a challenge in getting power because they're being told it's going to be 35 shillings and all that. Mm. In the drive to ensure that we are also having uh, easy application and connectivity, yeah. uh, the government was supposed to be taking that amount and then subsidize the, uh, the for application new connections. for new connection. Okay. At the same time, it was also supposed to assist in the maintenance of those lines. Okay. Now, um, I know some bit of that kitty was added by World Bank. Mm. Uh, but again, that is another area that is not accounted for. Right now, you may not say, we heard that Kenya Power, they, they was procurement, uh, they, they, they had halted some procurement process, so there was, was nothing going on. Mm. Uh, several people has also called, have also called me and asked me, uh, we don't have this token meters, what is the challenge? Of course, I tell them that that is not my line, but uh, I have found out that there was a challenge in the procurement uh, because of the investigation that uh, Gordon was doing. Mm. And uh, so if they, are, they were still collecting this money and there was no more connectivity going on, then where was that money going? Do you know, by the way, um, the Garissa Solar is now being owned by Relic, the rural electrification, the people who collect that money. Mm. So you are asking, could they be investing this money into, into their own other. things and then we should get a bit of that profit <laughs> from Garisa. So the whole idea of yes. rural, uh, rural electrification charge yes. is like the petroleum development levy. Yes. Okay. So it goes in there. But, but, okay. the, but the accounting is, is a challenge. Is there where the issue is? Yes. There's a warma charge. Yes. What is that? Warma is, uh, we are supposed to have to collect some money because of the communities uh, that are around where we, we, we get water from the Seven Forks, where we have hydro. Eh? Okay. Um, of course, you even had at one point the Mura former Moranga governor saying you cannot get water from uh, Moranga and not give them something. Yeah. Uh, so it's the same idea. And uh, again, it's uh, some, something that is very little. It's a small uh, amount. Uh, it's a very small token. It's mm. supposed to either sometimes maintain their roads there or sometimes even build the, the CSR of that area. Okay. Yes. But again, uh, I, I don't know how it's normally accounted for, mm. but I may not have a challenge because maybe it is not a lot of money but based on that region maybe it is a lot of money okay yeah maybe the region is small so somebody bought uh, uh, power units tokens yes on the 31st of december yes. at about 3 30 p.m yes they spent five thousand shillings 
Ndu, please get your calculator out. Yes, please. Use your Z Flip 4 to calculate it better and clearer. Okay. Yes. Tell me when you're ready. I am ready in 3 2 1 now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this person sends 5000 shillings to buy tokens. 5000. Okay. Now let's start subtracting. Mm -hmm. Subtract a pre charge which is 7 shillings and 36 cents. Minus 7.36. And then they got one more charge which is 2 shillings and 82 cents. Minus 2.80. Shilling. The REP charge which is 94 shillings and 55 cents. Minus 94.55. Yes, I'm going from the small amounts to high amounts. Those are the three the levies that uh, mm -hmm. the rev was talking about. Mm -hmm. So now let's go to the others. Okay. The big ticket items. Mm -hmm. Inflation adjustment 164 shillings and 54 cents. Minus 164.54 please. Okay. Mm -hmm. Forex charge 508 shillings and 8 cents minus 508.08 no 0.80 508.08 okay yes uh -huh. okay you know? fuel energy charge mm -hmm. it is 1748.56 this is for to buy tokens of 5000 by the way yeah? 1748.56 yes wonderful uh -huh. Ni mbaki ngapi? 2473.39 shillings please. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Tuendelee kutoatoa kidogo. Okay. Ni pesa bado ni mingi. Mm -hmm. Let's remove VAT mm. 582 shillings and 32 cents. 582.32 please. Uh -huh. How much is left? 1891 shillings and 0.07. That is the amount of power that this person <laughs> buys. <laughs> um from 5000 shillings the token amount is 1891. Let, let, let's check uh, you said it is 5000 shillings yes how many units were they given they were got 245.59 units uh 245.59 those people i don't know why they are complaining they were paying at 20 shillings per kilowatt hour remember this th that is not the group of 26 shillings it's okay yes but boss I have spent 5000 bob. <laughs> I'm getting what power worth 1800. Yeah, yeah, that, that is, is where the issue is. Actually, uh, someone What's that percentage? 1891 over 5000 times 100. Mm -hmm. 1891. 1891 over, over 5000 times 100. What's the percentage? Yeah, yeah, that is 37%. Imagine. 37%. Is what you're getting that is Hey, hey. 37.8 of the amount Let, let's do this eh? i think there is a better way we can do it you're eh? only getting 37% yeah that is what you that's the value you're the rest getting for what you paid to government oh. and the others yes now let's look at uh, what is the fuel can you give me the value for fuel cost and forex only we look fuel at what energy yeah. charge 1748.56 17.56 then the other one uh, uh, let me add 17 48.56.56 the forex, other one, forex, forex is 508.8 8.8. See now that is 2257. On only those two items. Yes. So if you divide that by 5000, you get is 45%. 45% goes in those two, those you two. You know how much mm. they provide mm. in the generation? Yeah. They are providing 12%. And they're getting 45% yes. of the cost. Yes. How does that how on God's green earth is that even that, explainable? <laughs> Yeah, but if you that add the input, two, yeah. I mean, giving... this is arithmetic time. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> 45 plus 70, 37% mm. gives you 82%. Mm -hmm. uh, so the other uh, 18%, 18%, where does it go? It's at Levis. Mm. Is the Levis Warma? Levis we didn't Levis. ask. Warma, REP, yes. Yes. those things. And VAT. Mm. So I, I think you've come, to, you've come to the point that I wanted you to come to. Please, mm. if that I can just, as, as you're going to that, eh, yes. because let's just open it just a little bit, because sometimes I think we get wrapped up. Because what we are saying essentially is that you, as the person who is earning the bulk of this amount of 45%, yes. Compared to everybody else, yes. your input is 12%. Yes. So what explainable reason do we have for this 37 for this 27%? It's almost as though it's free money. So we're paying 45%, yes. but they're inputting 12%, they're getting 45% out. No, so this no, no. So how much electricity do they give us as a percentage? 
it's 12 12 percent it, it, where is it this 27%? is this is not the money that is that is going to the ipps <laughs> it is the money that is going as a result, as a result. of having ipps oh, yes, yes. because we are talking about forex charge i mean the dollar is behaving the way it's behaving it's going to cost us 508 to buy the dollar to pay this guy yes the fuel energy charge it's going to cost us x amount of money to buy the oil blah 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 to go here okay mm-hmm. the the issues here come on number one because it's a dollar denominated contract yes and euros eh? and euro and euros, yeah. yeah so it's a dollar and euro denominated contract yes and number two because they are using thermal which is determined by the global fuel price yes the problem though that you're saying yes is that there is no clarity or transparency on how we arrive at this yes two yes then Interestingly, let me first start by saying that uh, the various generation mixes. Eh? Mm. Um, Geothermal is the uh, highest. I, I think Geothermal is at par with hydro at mm. 28% mm-hmm. of the installed capacity. And uh, they are doing quite well because they, they give us quite... In fact, Geothermal is giving us more than 40% of the generation. Mm. Now, the installed capacity of Thermos is around 600 megawatt. 600 megawatt. Yep. And remember... The utilization of that 600 megawatt is 23%. Mm. We only utilize 23%. And, and the rest? The rest is either they are on IDO, we are waiting for the them. The thing to is, I have a capacity yes. to give you 600. Yes. But you're only taking 20% of that. And yes. why do we need the 20%? Explain. Why do we need to have these small plants? Okay, uh, for now, there is no reason. Kitambo, there was a reason because there were, you know, remember the power outages when mm. we were having the rationing. Yep. That time during Kibaki's era, we had that reason, and that is why most of them came up around that time. And you're saying that also yes. by that time, the, the the capacity of the thermos were not what it is now. Yes, we didn't have thermal. We, so we, we didn't have it. We, yeah, mm. most of them came in around that time. Yes. Now they are around 600. I think they are around 640 megawatt. Now, remember, uh, I want to explain that we went and started, we signed a contract that is supposed to run for 25 years with Ethiopia mm. to provide 400 megawatt. For what purpose exactly? Um, they called it uh, power pooling or some, you, you, what, what. We have, a, we have a whole regional it's an agreement. power agreement. Yeah, but, but here, City, before you ask, so that you can ask a good question. Mm. One, we have, Geothermal, we have drilled uh, 863 megawatt. Okay. Geothermal, right. 863 our geothermal potential is over 7,000. So we've not even done, I think, uh, it's slightly under 10%. Mm-hmm. Now, what happened? Our Kenyan team for geothermal drilling were told by Ethiopia, come and drill for us geothermal. Yep. They didn't drill for Kenya. Yep. And then, after drilling, they are now selling to us 200 megawatt for a start. Then after three years, they are going to review. And you see, the challenge is, it was signed in terms of dollar. Mm. The one we are complaining about, to run for 25. Now, ask the question. Uh, you know me, I, I, I'm, I'm actually confused. <laughs> yes. Because just before we started talking about Ethiopia, we're talking about this production of 600 megawatts yes. that we only use a small percentage of. Yes. There's some 20% lying idle. Yes. No, 20% is what we actually 23% is what we, is what we, we have use. about 75% or so yes. lying idle. Okay. So if it's lying idle, it means it's not used. Mm. It means it's not generated. It's not generated. Let, 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 me, let me explain. Let me explain yeah, so that you don't think that there are some <laughs> that are just idling. Remember, there is a time Kenya will demand so much yeah. megawatt in a day. Yep. In a certain time. So those guys will now be told, can you start? So they should be on standby. Mm. But most of the time, they are normally idle. You get so now, what, why I brought in the issue of Ethiopia is to say that with the 400 or 200 megawatt, though it was also purchased at a high cost of, uh, I think, uh, over seven shillings. We can switch off. Uh, we, ca- we could switch off several of them and then tell them, here, you need like 50 billion or 100 billion. To recoup your investment. Wait and to Kosawa. Because they are going to penalize you because of bleaching the contract. Yeah. If we were told by Ken Tarus that that is going to be around 50 billion, I don't expect, I think he was also not, I may not have been an MD of have, Kenya Power, but that figures. I will tell him, I think he was not realistic. Yeah. It could be something more than 100 billion it, or so. It has to be. But... If that is the case and we are giving these guys about 72 billion per year, what is the big challenge? Even if we are told as Kenyans, we will not provide you with any thermal, but we will be collecting power from fuel cost 
But in one year, we'll have collected 72 billion and we'll tell these guys to go. Then we will also take another 72 billion. We will continue paying for two years. And then we do geothermal drilling such that we can now get an extra 1,000 capacity. capacity. Mm. And then we also decide that we are not getting from Ethiopia, or rather, if this one we are getting from Ethiopia must be utilized. Then uh, we can simply say that is what has uh, uh, substituted the thermos. Yeah, but what's the logic here? Yes. Because I understand, because you've taken my mind to just uh, oil production. Yes. Mm. You would find the so-called developed countries, let's talk about the U.S. Mm -hmm. They have oil reserves. Yes. But they were busy getting oil from other countries who also are taking mm -hmm. their big companies to drill oil. In, 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 in. The argument from what I understand, was so that they can conserve what they have. Yes. Okay? Are we conserving our thermal? <laughs> thermal or geothermal? Geothermal. Are no, we, no, no, no. Are, 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 are we conserving it? We, we have no idea of... Of course, geothermal operates in a way that uh, it could be affected. If you harness it from other areas, it might deplete what you have. That is what I would think. Because it's I something underground. We don't really know. But, but we but do not have... Actually, it's also it's a renewable energy, geothermal. Mm. So it is water going down. Mm. You, know? you remember, the, we also try to feed it back. Eh? Mm. So it is, we get it back, we, we, we get it as steam, we cool, then we, we put it back. So it is renewable, sort of. So, uh, Haishi, I don't think we are conserving. So if, if Haishi, then why, why are we buying... Uh Whatever we're buying from Ethiopia. From Ethiopia. Yes, why? I mean, I, mean, I don't understand Remember, the logic. There must some be this, some logic city, behind city it. City does not know that uh, the whole of that issue involved public participation. And by so doing, he is assumed he to have accepted. He was co-opted. When was this public participation held? You see, Every, you don't everything know. Everything in Kenya has been <laughs> through public participation. Yeah, For I us, understand. it's, it's yes. part of a regional hmm? power uh, agreement. Yes. Such that Meaning what exactly? This region then stabilizes in terms of power. Yeah. Okay. So at some point you may find that yeah because of what one issue or the other our line from Loyangalani yes. it goes down for three weeks in December 2021 and that mm. affects our power supply and that's when we ramped up our power from thermal yes. so you have Ethiopia which is giving you power which you have basically you just have stabilization yes. so are of we the also grid. going to be giving Ethiopia power because if 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 regional stability to, to generate enough if we to generate enough to CCP. Yeah, but we already have the capacity to generate enough why are we not generating we it? it's it because them, someone the will Indian. want them the thermos to be here as long as possible because you remember see I have told you they only generate 12% and this is data that uh, is normally provided for 12% and you have seen they take 45% isn't it now if Again, there is some hidden contract that you will never know how much they were paid. Uh, when you become a president, I would expect that you would want to come and realize that this is where the problem was. But then again, maybe your people will say, Mukuba unajua hapa tukiharibu. Tukiguza. Uh, we, we, we will also not have money. Because that is one avenue where they get a lot of money. Yes. The government is basically, Kenya Power is called a tax collecting, collecting yes, agency. Of, of the, if you just look at all that, if you spend... 5,000 shillings and yes. you get less than 1,900 worth of power. It's ludicrous. Then you just ask yourself, what is it? There's a, that thing that's being shared on social media. Yes. On If Kenya Power were to sell you tea. Yes. Tea. Yes. This is the breakdown of how <laughs> that tea would cost. Tea, 15 shillings. Yes. Serving tea, 10 bob. <laughs> Serving now. Milk in tea, 20 bob. The same tea. Water in tea, 15 bob. <laughs> <laughs> tea leaves, 18 shillings and 50 cents. Cooking gas, 9. Salary for the cook, 5 bob. Rent, <laughs> 5 shillings and 50 cents. County license, 13 bob. Adjustable taste, 14 bob. <laughs> <laughs> Sephora levy, 7 bob. <laughs> you see now, actually... So the total cost of that tea is 132 bob. What, what I would tell this guy <laughs> is uh, we, we are not... First of all, I, I still want to insist because we want to partner with the media house mm. where we'll be providing that information. Um, we'll provide the information, then they provide the page. I'm not sure whether Standard will take it uh, before Nation does that or whoever. But mm. uh, of course, I, uh, we have a spoke. Isaac, are you baiting? Yeah, this is, this no, no, no. We are, yeah. no <laughs> we, we are simply saying that you've been very supportive in this information. So you should actually get the priority in doing that. <laughs> but now, what I would tell the government is, number one, it is a national agreement through sustainable development goals. It is also in the constitution that we must get this information to the people. That is number one. So 
in the, of this information of how much was generated, what, how was it shared among uh, the other IPPs, and why was it that amount? Mm. That must be explained to people. Mm. You know, if, 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 if we haven't been told how it is that all these levies that are in fuel, one isn't even clear how much is actually collected. No, you, you are told. I, I, I was with the co uh, director for consumer protection right, very good. In, in April, and he told us mm -hmm. that these things are normally explained in the Kenya Gazette every month. So I asked ah. him, uh, you go to the countryside and ask someone what is the Gazette. <laughs> and then, unfortunately, or fortunately, it is costing 60 shillings just as the normal Isaac, newspaper. Isaac. So they don't differentiate. Isaac. Yes. Isaac. <sighs> You know, mm -hmm. this thing of it being in the Kenyan Gazette, <laughs> yes. okay? even if you told us that every month you publish it in all the major papers, yes. okay? Still. Yeah, thank you very much, Eric. Still. But there is processing. We will do a lot of processing of information. Yes, but then, you see, m my question is not whether it is published or whether there's a website. Mm. Yes. Is how do we know that that is what is really happening? That really is my question. Okay, it is going to create the public uproar in, because once you understand what happens, yeah. you will be able to push your government oh. because I, I believe right now why they don't care much about what is the fuel cost is because, because nobody is asking, isn't it? Yes. Right now, if we are so many of us asking, then if it is on the paper, even some of them read the papers and they are surprised with some of the parameters that they have actually <laughs> cost and then they are worried. So once we start putting them on papers, and then they realize that actually the generation for Zamos was this amount, mm. but then the cost is this amount. They will see, ay, apa, ata wangwana, wala wali tuchagua, wata wana, apa, wata wana, iko kitu. Yes. Tereva, thank you very much for joining us. Santi sana. We wish you a happy new year. You and too. keep coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. So Isaac Tereva is the executive director of the Electricity Consumer Society of Kenya. Good morning. It's 9 a.m. Spice up your life. Good morning, this is Newswire. I'm Dennis Aseto. President William Ruto is set to hold a cabinet retreat from Thursday this week at the Sagano set launch. The meeting will bring together cabinet secretaries, presidential advisors and principal secretaries. The four-day retreat will focus on reviewing the steps Kenya Kwan administration has made in 100 days since assumption of office and outline the priority agenda as the new year begins. According to State House spokesperson Hussein Mohammed, the meeting will also spell out key areas of focus that will facilitate the realization of the Kenya Kwanzaa campaign pledges, among them reducing the high cost of living. In his New Year's message to the country, the head of state indicated that the government was forced to scrap subsidies on maize flour, electricity and oil products, saying such programs will come with a huge burden to the taxpayer. The hunger situation in the country is expected to continue until June this year owing to the failure of short rains. According to the Emergency Preparedness and Response Manager, the Kenya Red Cross, Venant and Degila, the number of those affected by drought has been going up and is expected to continue going up. He added that the failed short rains that normally take place between the months of October and December gave Kenyans, including the government and aid agencies, a false hope, adding that since January and February are dry seasons, substantial rains may start in March and the first harvest done as from May and June. Nagila also said that the water problem had led to many communities to travel longer distances for the commodity. His sentiments are echoed by the Cabinet Secretary for East African Community, Rebecca Miano, who said that most parts of the country had not harvested any crop in five seasons. And the company operating the Nairobi Expressway has disclosed that the Chinese-built highway currently records close to 50,000 vehicles in daily traffic volume. The numbers, according to the Moj Expressway Company Chief Executive Officer Steve Zhao, demonstrate that the mega road project in the country's capital has become an attractive mode of transport to majority of Kenyans. He further disclosed that at the moment there are over a hundred thousand motorists have subscribed to electronic
toll collection system and over 10,000 motorists are minor toll collection card holders. The CEO says he expects this number to grow this year as the company plans to roll out the ETC promotion for freight and heavy commercial vehicles and discounts to frequent users starting mid-January. The Nairobi Expressway is the first and largest public-private partnership project investment by the China Road and Bridge Corporation in Kenya. And the Chinese company eyes the success of the project will inspire confidence in other investors to seek to undertake projects in the country under the PPP model. And Dubai has dropped a 30% tax on alcohol sales in an apparent bid to lure tourists as competition rises between major cities in the wealthy Gulf. The cut announced by distributors but not confirmed by authorities look set to slash prices that are among the world's highest with beer routinely costing more than $15 that's approximately 1851 a pint or half litre. The personal liquor license available to non-Muslims aged over 21 and required to buy alcohol at Dubai's small number of licensed shops is now free according to distributors and African and Eastern. And Russia's defense ministry has said that 63 Russian soldiers had been killed in a Ukrainian New Year's Eve attack on their quarters in the Russian-controlled part of Ukraine's Donetsk province. Footage posted online showed a building purported to be a vocational college in the town of Makivka, the town city of regional capital Donetsk, reduced to a field of smoldering rubble. Earlier, Ukraine's defense ministry said as many as 400 Russians had been killed. Daniel Besonov, a senior Russian-backed regional official in the Moscow-controlled parts of Donetsk region, said the vocational college had been hit by U.S.-made HIMARS rockets at around midnight as people in the region would have, celeb have been celebrating the start of the new year. And African and Commonwealth Games 100 meters champion Ferdinand Manila has launched a challenge to plant 1 million trees as he celebrated his birthday. The 28-year-old sprinter took to his social media to invite his fans to join him in the challenge, which is stated is in support of the government's mission and target of planting 15 billion trees. President Ruto launched a tree restoration program in Gong Health Forest on December 21st to kickstart the plan of planting 15 billion trees by 2032 to grow Kenya's cover from less than 10% to around 30%. This is Newswire. I'm Dennis Alceta. Good morning. Four point four Spice FM, Nairobi. Not much to contend with in terms of traffic this morning. It doesn't look too bad coming off Mombasa Road. You're going to get into the city without too much of a holdup. Also looking pretty good on Langata Road. You see a little bit trickling into the city from Gong Road, but uh, you should be able to get through that without too much of an issue. Jogo Road is looking pretty good. You're going to get up towards Landis where there's a little bit of traffic as you head towards Kamkunji and then into the CBD is where you see the most of it. There's some action going on on Juja Road. That's inbound traffic and also a little bit on Kiambu Road as well. What was there on the thicker superhighway is now diminishing towards Moran road as you're getting through to the globe cinema over and on the bus right so it looks like for now shouldn't be too bad heading out towards 10 o'clock we'll keep an eye on things let us know also what's going on with you spice of mke on twitter This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, Controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is The Situation Room. It is the only way to start. Good morning and welcome to the final hour of The Situation Room today. It's Tuesday. 
the third day of January 2023. Well done. Just like that, we are two, on to three, that new two, year. 23. Hmm? Two, three, do again. Two, one, two, two, 23. One, two. One. One, January. January. Today's the third. Okay, so one. Okay, forget about it. No, no, no. <laughs> one, three, it two, two. <laughs> Why are you what doing an American calendar, Bona? In Kenya, you start with the date. Three. 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 One. one. Two. Zero. Zero. Two, two three. three. <laughs> That's it. It's rhythmic, isn't it? Sindio. Mm. Okay. It flows. Mm. Somehow. Kind of flow. Kind of flow, Sindio. Three at the beginning and the three at the end. Kind of flow. Mm. Kind of flow. And it's also a very good time to make sure that we subscribe for Showmax. Because of why? Because Showmax does what? It gives you all the best entertainment that you can get. Showmax.com or Showmax app. You go and download the app either on your smartphone or your smart TV or your smart uh, tablet. Make sure that then you have that. Showmax is making it easier for everyone to access it. Get great quality content, both local and international, from as low as 300 shillings per month. 300 bob. It is lower than the amount of money you pay for Forex charge for power. <laughs> you can pay for your Showmax subscription via credit card or M-Pesa. Additionally, you can add your existing DSTV subscription and get to watch Showmax. Have a Showmax season as we celebrate a new year. New year, new things, new Showmax. City Muga. Mm. Buanae. Buanae. Mm. You know, I'm delighted you mentioned it. Mm. The avenue through which you can show Max. Yes. Mm? Yes. Indeed. Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra Series. Mm. This one can do wonderful things for you. But nonetheless, that having been said, let me use it for some other utility. Mm -hmm. The proverb, anyone who sees beauty and does not look at it will soon be poor. Anyone who sees beauty and does not... Anyone who sees and does not look. Yes, anyone who sees and does not look. <laughs> yes. Really? <laughs> It's before you, mm. but, you don't, you, but, but, you don't, but you don't give it a good stare. <laughs> You're poorer for That's it. Anyone who sees but, but does, does not, not look. look. Yes. It's, it's, not, see, it's not possible. It's, oh, it's, it's very it's possible. It's easier to it's look like but not see, but not, is, not see but not look. Uh, this is where I have to advise you as <laughs> my personal my friend. Problem. No, Thank you very much. You, you see, Eric is a man who knows. <laughs> <laughs> I have to advise you as my personal friend. My, person, my, my, my personal friend, friend yes. Ukitaka proverb yako. Please, <laughs> just write it. And, and, and the and things you've just said, <laughs> just add to your proverb, and then we'll say. Everyone okay. sees, but does not look. Yes. <laughs> How is that possible? You can Explain. see... Let me read. You can see anyone not, who sees not beauty. Look. You've seen beauty, and does not look at it will soon be poor. As in, you've seen it; it has passed you. Yes, but and now you didn't now pay attention. Pay attention and and give it a good stare, as I said. Like okay? you can hear, but you didn't listen. Yes, ugly it. Hmm. Sure, you get. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Bring whatever you want to bring. Even mm. if you want to say see and look and don't see. Mm. Fine. It is okay. It's okay. It's okay. Mm. Even when Machogu says, you know what, eh? there's something that's not going to happen. We are going to scrap help. I've seen it somewhere. <laughs> Let me just tell you that one. It, yeah, it's a It's a ruto. Yes. The government has promised Kenyans that the education sector will improve. The president stated that he has used the last four months of his presidency to lay the groundwork for revolution in the education sector. Ruto promised to abolish the Higher Education Loans Board and TVET funding and to establish a National Skills and Funding Council to connect the two levels in order to provide a credit transfer framework and to support academic progression. The National Education Fund will mobilize grants, bursaries, and scholarships from private and public sponsors to cover non-tuition costs. To bridge the current higher education funding gap of up to 45%, the government will establish the National Skills and Funding Council that amalgamates HELB, TIVET, 
and university funding board. This immediately doubles the current higher education loans board funding from 11 billion to 22 billion and eliminates interest on help loans. Ringing in the new year at State House in Mombasa, Ruto said the government intends to invest more money in the sector to give it new life. 30,000 ad additional teachers of, for basic education, 3,000 tutors for Tibet will be hired this year to ensure smooth transition. So basically what they're saying is, you see that thing that we're talking about, funding for universities and the gap mm -hmm. should be 80%. We are getting only 30%, blah, 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 and those things. So create one amalgamated uh, fund that then manages to ma to finance tuition and non-tuition. These and very many other things that the president has promised. We are going to look at the cost of living this year. We're going to look at uh, cost of electricity. We're going to support our farmers. In fact, we are going to roll out one thing that we're calling, uh, what are they calling it? The, 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 how they're going to distribute fertilizer. On the digital thing with Faricom, yeah, yeah, right? Um, that thing, voucher, e-voucher. E -voucher. The e-voucher for distribution of fertilizer, which will also then be also followed by e distribution of seed using the e-voucher for farmers to access. We're going to have houses. Counties have been asked, you, you have land. Can you tell us where the land is? Then we come in and, and put that, up houses. And that warehousing system that they spoke of? The warehousing system of Kitambo. Mm. The one that was launched. Mm. Uh, that too. Is it, is it working? Who knows? Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. I apologize. I apologize. I apologize. In one year time. <laughs> no, I apologize. Please. In six months time. Mm. Carry on, please. We are going to raise our current tax collection from about 2.1, 2.2 trillion shillings to about 3 trillion shillings. Yeah. Mm. So there's a lot that's going to happen. Uh, as we get into the new year. Now, the thing is, as we are starting this year, right, and we have a government that is already now firmly in place, 100 days in office already, the president has had time to form his government, has CSs, half PSs, he's played around with some appointments here and there for key areas. Um, if it's power sector, we have now a new chairperson at Kenya Power. If it's uh, a pipeline, we have a new bosses at pipeline. We have a national investment council that has people. In, it's called the national investment council, is it? Yeah, something like that. Uh, we all these offices in place now. They are in office, moving. Mm. What should we now expect from the William Ruto administration? It's a good question, isn't it? Mm. It's a very, very good question. And uh, when we ask the question, let's give a little uh, disclaimer here. Okay. What should we expect? We are not expecting more promises. Just for, for yes, let's start there. Yeah. No more promises. No, no more words. No, 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 no. Words are, are a plenty. Mm. And those words have been accompanied by documentation mm. that one can look at to mm. ascertain whether those words were actually also put on paper. Mm. Okay? Th that we've gotten. Mm. What do we expect to see? Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. My pet peeve, this highway, super expressway, uh -huh. we know 9.3 million shillings was given for it. Is, no. is it possible? You just, no, not the expressway city. No. The under road. Uh, no. Uh, the expressway caused that problem. Uh -huh. mm. Mm. The building of the expressway is what brought about the problem that now made it possible for there to appear this budget for 9.3 billion. Is, is that not so? Yes, mm. sir. Hey, yes. Cause consequence. Yes, sir. So I'm simply saying, mm. for me personally, if that can be sorted out because the money was given, eh? so that there are walkways, mm. there are things that, the, all these funny bumps and dips and, 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 and uh, potholes that keep increasing, all those things cease. I will say yes. I have seen. Yes, I have seen. I will. I will say, and, I, and and yes, and I will, and that th that particular activity will now improve my sight, and then I will see many other good things. Mm. Yes. What do you expect to do? Kai, this one had smaller big. <laughs> see, you see, and that's the thing about the elasticity of hope that it can be stretched you know every time you say look i expect that people are going to do what they say and i give the benefit of the doubt of doubt and say you've been given this opportunity you must actually
actually do this. My expectation is that people will do what they say they will do. Mm. That is my expectation. That you're going to stand up in a public place and you're going to say, you know what, guys? No, 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 no. Even before you stand up in that public place, you've asked for the job. One would hope that it is not for clout or it's not for political, uh, political expediency seeking that you actually want to see something done better or done well in this country. So you say, please, whether you're going to... Kusema na kutenda is what mm. you're looking for. Whether you're going to canvas, whatever it is that you're going to do, the hope is that the back end is reading to make better. You know, in the back end, you know those things that are happening there behind there. Mm. At th 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 what is being processed there is to get into this position to make things better. Yep. PSCS, to make things better, to improve. My expectation is that the 22 people who've been chosen, hmm? my expectation is that those under them, whether you have four PSs, two PSs, one PS in your ministry, that they are saying it is for us to complete the things that have been started and those things that we said we are going to do, to do them. If you open your mouth to say, I'm going to do, to do it, to complete the work that has started, that's my expectation. Hmm. Whether my expectations will be dashed against the rocks? No, I do not. No, that's... Uh, but that is... You wait to see. <laughs> I think I'd, I'd just say, I expect something like I was hoping to get out of the Uhuru administration, which I didn't get. The truth. At all times, can the government just be truthful? All right? It's dealing with a generation of Kenyans who are woke, who have access to information, who have access to filling up voids when there is a vacuum of information they actually are very quick to fill up that that vacuum can the government just be truthful on all fronts when the president says we are going to cut our budget by 300 billion shillings immediately can we see that he's actually saying something that he knows it's true it can be done and let it be done okay we're already just five months into the end of the financial year so where is the 300 billion shillings gonna come from now and what is being cut? Can you just tell us the truth? Can you tell us the truth on who is lending people money to the tune of 11 billion shillings so far under the Hustler Fund? Because that money is not from appropriations from the National uh, Assembly. So whose money is this that people are being lent? Lent 11 billion shillings. Who are we borrowing from? Whom are we paying? 11 billion shillings. Can you just tell us the truth on what is happening? Tell us the truth when you say, okay, we're going to have cheaper fertilizer, this, this, and the other. All right, so what is this cheaper fertilizer? When is it coming? Who's going to get? Uh, how is it going to roll out? Just always be truthful and say, this is what we expect. This is what we shall get. When you say, no, the cost of power shall not go up, can you be truthful? Because what is it that the consumer considers going up? The consumer considers going up, not the tariff to Kenya Power going up, but how much the consumer is, co is spending per month for power in their bill, whether it's prepaid or postpaid. If that is going up, the truth is that it's going up. You don't come and say, oh, no, 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 the cost of power will not go up. If it's going up, it's going up. Just say, there's this that's happening and it's beyond my control. If it's Forex, it's beyond your control. Just say, this is beyond my control or I'm going to try and push, con put controls up to this level. The rest to chasm shipi sort of. then we can all chasm shipi if this administration does like the previous administration it just comes and plays us here with words but not the truth if it's not willing to look and face the truth head on we are all lying to ourselves hey you guys had a list of things. May I just start it and finish with the road? Okay, come on. Now, now you have the others. You've had time to think. <laughs> you just want the road to be done. <laughs> well, actually, for me, mm. the road is symbolic. Indeed. It's symbolic of not only the promise, but the amount of money that actually gets allocated for projects. And we rarely see the value of it because after it's been allocated, it's a story. Mm. The next time one hears a story of that same allocation is when the Auditor General comes in. And the Auditor General is not usually coming to say this money was well spent. Mm -mm. It's audit <laughs> queries. This money which you said you're going to do A, B, C, D with, uh, well, yeah, how yeah, is yeah. it that I, I had not seemed to see it here? Where's the documentation? Mm. And for that to arise, it means the Auditor General's office had asked mm. for proof mm. of what you say you have done and didn't find it. So they're saying, excuse me, we didn't find this. Now, it can't be the story that dominates literally everything that we expect the government to do. Mm -mm. 
Because apart from just eroding the confidence that people have, you see, this is where now elected leadership, appointed leadership fail the citizenry. You have a citizenry that supports you by giving you something valuable. It's called goodwill. We bitch, we pitch, we complain. Mm. But at some point we say, okay, you are the ones who have the mandate, you have the power. Yeah. Sour. Now, delivery. Mm. And then we hold our breath. And then at some point we have to stop holding our breath, we have to breathe. And even as we breathe and hold our breath again, we are not any way forward. Now, you know this cycle cannot go on ad infinitum, huh? Mm-mm. Mm. Because we are setting in motion something that will be very, very costly for us and it's something that we will not be able to claw back on. Perhaps this is the time where we ask that that cycle then be broken. And one of the ways in which it can be broken is the constant, um, is the constant questioning. It's the constant interrogation of your government. And that is where participatory governance comes into play. Yeah. And that's what Isaac was saying. If you keep asking, keep Asking, keep showing you them that keep you, showing you, them know. That you know, keep sharing the information, keep saying, where did this go? You said you were going to do this. Why has it not been done? One thing that struck me, the participation that goes on at the community level in rural Kenya is amazing. Mm. It's profound, isn't it? It's unbelievable. It is here in the city that people are joking around. You at the community level. Local leaders come and tell them that they said they're going to do this thing. They are asking questions. They're asking people. You said, you're, where is it? You said you're going to do ECD for us. Where is it? Mm. You said, where is it? They're asking questions. They're the ones who are going to get rid of you. If you don't, they will. And the way they get rid of you is that the next time you come and ask them to give you a vote, they say, thank you very much, but we will not give you that opportunity because you shafted us last time. Yeah. And that is what participatory government... Because you ask, oh, there's really nothing that I can do because I've, I'm not an MP, I'm not an MCA. Well, guess what? You're the one who holds governance in your hands. And we, this is the problem, that we underestimate the power of the citizen voice. We underestimate the power of the wanainchi that we speak about every day. What power do you hold? That if you're constantly... At, my mother used to say, when you want something from your father, you ask today, you ask tomorrow... At some point, one of two things will happen. That he then makes a decision to give you that thing or he becomes so tired of you that he gives you that thing. So you win either way. You get that thing. You get the right thing done because you keep asking the question or you irritate the bugger enough until he has to do something about it. And that's what participatory governance is. You do it. You have to ask. Mm. You must question. You must be aware of what's going on in order for you to ask. You cannot ask something of which you do not know. You must know what's going on. You must ask the questions. And then if those things are not, are not done, you must then interrogate as to why. Yeah. So those two things will happen. They will do their job or they will get irritated to the point that they do the thing. Why don't you hear what you have to say about this? What do you expect from the William Ruto administration in 2023? Call us 0719 012 That's 0719 012 Omar in Kwale. Yes. Good morning and happy new year. Happy new year to you, Omar. How are you? Ah, nini, I'm fine. Nini watu muli nitesa nini. Kwa nini, bana? Kivipi? You know, schools, you know, schools closed, eh? Uh-huh. <laughs> so you are, not, like, you are not now, busy. Now I, I will, I, I'll be free. I'll be listening to Spice and Country. <laughs> then I hear there's some recaps. Ah. Ole, bana. But anyway, I appreciate. It's yeah. very insightful and very educative. You people are doing conscience awakening, and that's what the media should do. Sante. About 2023 and Ruto's administration, yep. I don't expect anything. We just ate our cake and we can't have it. Eh. Simple. We ate our cake. We can't have it now. So Boy. ladies will be done. We are just a piece of clay and is the porter. Aye. <laughs> yeah. Are you giving up that early? Ah, oh, Mar is gone. Eh. Hey! He's given eyes like ah. So. He's done. Ah, nah. Maybe the same thing that uh, is being expressed by Stula the general when he says he expects Maziwa Yanyaya. It's like saying. <laughs> Whatever. I'll take what I can get. Yeah. <laughs> what is Juma saying? Juma Makugunga. 
I'm expecting him to threaten those bandits of Kerio Valley again. And since he said that the Jubilee administration, which he was part of, let the place to be insecure just to punish him. Now, who is he punishing Ooh. by not doing anything? La ila. Ooh. You know the thing about the media, my friend? Ooh. They never forget. They, not only does he not forget, my friend, that thing is there for posterity. It's not going anywhere. Mm. Now, this was before the digital age. What I've just said, it was mm. before the digital age. Mm. It was before this era of communication. No, no, no. Now, what do you think the things you say amount to? What is set in motion now with the digital age? Mm. You know, there is no escape. Yeah. So basically, Juma is raising the issue of Kerio Valley, mm. right? So mm. the president was there. The president, even after taking over office, he went to Kerio Valley and he said, you know what? Eh? Sio tafadhali. This issue of banditry must end. Nasio Tafadali. He ordered that there be proper de deployment of security officers on the ground. Yep. Blah, 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 blah. This and the other. Last week. Yep. People were killed. Again. Children. Again. In attacks. So. What's the cause of that? What's happening in Kerio Valley? Can we say that there's actually been a move towards proper pacification of these counties? Mm -hmm. Where? What do you expect of the Ruto administration in 2023? Speak to him. He is listening. His people are listening. They always do. Let's hear what is it that we expect of the government this year. Ndu is saying, what I expect is Kusemana Kutenda. What the things that you say you'll do, can you just do them and not keep saying you will do, you will do, you will do, right? Right. It's not just words, 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 words. Let us start seeing some action. And then let that action be sustainable action, not just some slapstick action. Eh? Mm -hmm. Because that's the other thing. You can just go there and say something and launch an operation <laughs> for two days and just to disappear. show that there's something that's happening. But if it's not long term, it's not long term. It's not going to work. Let's see the proper action that's taking place. Uh, CT says, what did you say, CT? About Very many things. Your expectations. expectations. You know, <laughs> uh, there's something you mm -hmm. said that set my mind mm -hmm. sort of like moving. Eh? Mm -hmm. Use the word pacification. Huh? Yes. It reminds me of uh, uh, things fall apart. Mm -hmm. Okay, the whole book is about this life of uh, a life of this man called Okonkwo. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, <sighs> a modern day tragedy, and an understanding of how it is the colonial setting and everything that came with it came into play. But the bit that caught my attention was the guy who was the district commissioner at that point in time <laughs> looked at the life of Okonkwo. This whole history, this great person. And it occupied a paragraph in his, his book. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the title of the book is what I was reminded of. The Pacification of the Primitive Tribes of the Lower Niger. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, when people look at the history of this country, you ask yourself, what will they remember you for? Mm. Kenyans are very kind. Kind in that we forgive we are offended, we are wronged, we forgive. Yep. And we actually let it go. And we say, okay, let's start a new chapter. Yep. But then, there seems to be a group of people who, not because they were elected, because before they're elected, there are other people. When they're elected, this thing that happens, this genie that gets out of the bottle and gets into their heads, mm. suddenly, everything that they said they were going to do and who they thought they were going to be vanishes. And then we have a whole new crop of people who half the time we ask ourselves, now where did these ones come from? Who are these? I thought what we had was something different. Mm. Mm. And yet, the terrible thing is that everything that they're doing is etched in history. Mm -hmm. It will be remembered. And this age that we're in, even children will remember and will know. They don't require elderly people to tell them because they are... The, 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 should we say the custodians of knowledge? Uh -uh. Right. It's available, it's out there. Yeah. And when judgment day comes, and I'm not talking about the heavenly judgment, I'm talking about here, it'll be harsh. 0719-012-600. Let's go back to Kuala County, Mwakijembe. Mohammed, good morning. Morning, sir. Happy New Year and a very prosperous one for all of you at the, at the studio. And to you too, sir. Sana, you too. Hata hiyo kutumia neno ngwana nimeanza kupunguza mwaka huu. <laughs> Kwa nini kaka? Eh ni kusema na kutendwa. Eh yeah, kabisa. Mm. Ni kweli. Eh sio kusema na kutenda, kusema na kutendwa. Kusema. <laughs> <laughs> hiyo ndio tutarajie mwaka huu. Eh hey, kutendwa. 
eh kutendwa aya kwa nini sasa kwa hivyo mhm nyinyi mtaongea usiku mchana costa wakauka mhm nothing will happen why the moral fabric is shattered mhm hiyo ndio tusuluhisho tu kama hakuna hiyo tutaongea usiku na mchana itabaki kutendwa tu kila siku the rest is just talk empty talk ani hiyo tumtaongea tu lakini kwenu na maji karibu kwa hiyo si wakauke <laughs> eh manake mtaongea usiku mchana eh. hakuna kitu itatendeka ni kutendwa tu ai wish you all the best wazee na madam huko asante sana muungwana Asante bye. <laughs> yeah. 27 minutes to 10. Let's take a quick break so that you can t- take a look at the weather and traffic. We want to hear from you on 0719012600. Your expectations for 2023 is particularly from your government. What is it that you expect from your government in this year 2023? John Alan Namu, award-winning journalist, has been working on a series of real live crime series a docu series called the last door that's launching this sunday the 8th of january 2023 at 8 p.m. on maisha magic plus so do you have maisha magic plus if you don't please get it you can upgrade your current <coughs> dstv package just by dialing star 423 hash to pay for your dstv package and get a free upgrade that's courtesy of this conversation that we're having this morning okay and then you get to watch the last door by john lalan nawu that's premieres this sunday good morning time for that break this is the situation room the only way to start your day landa mulo and dj absolute when the gang is together you know it's sugar and spice great vibes conversations a lot of humor i like to say we don't give an f we give three f's you and i are in this relationship so it is me to tell you who yeah when you ask her how many guys are you been with <laughs> she's like including you <laughs> <laughs> if it's fun it's funky it's fresh you're definitely going to catch it here i don't know what you do every day from 11 a.m. to 3 o'clock if i were you i'd tune in to spice fm 94.4 I want you on my team. So does everybody else. Yeah. The new Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 and Watch 5 Pro are here. These devices will help you achieve your health and fitness goals. They count your steps, calories, and your daily routines, and they support over 90 exercises that you can track right from your watch. You can choose from analog to digital, vintage to modern, and you can select a watch face to help you face the day. Connect to your Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 with your Galaxy devices and take advantage of the powerful ecosystem available in select Samsung stores countrywide. Cloudy conditions continue in Nairobi at 16, highs of 21, and we'll see highs of 21 in a cloudy Nakuru at 17. It's cloudy at 16 in Nyeri, highs of 20 and lows of 11, and we'll see highs of 21 where it's cloudy in Eldoret at 15. 30 degrees is what it is right now in Mombasa, highs of 31, and we'll see highs of 31 as well in a cloudy Malindi at 29. It's 24 and cloudy in Kisumu, highs of 28, and we'll see highs of 25 in Kakamega where it's currently cloudy at 23. 22 and partly sunny conditions out in Kampala, going to highs of 27. And we'll see highs of 31 in a sunny Dar es Salaam at 30. It's 20 and sunny in Johannesburg, highs of 24 and lows of 15. And there's a haze of Lagos skies at 21, going to highs of 33. 31 will be the high in a rainy Kinshasa at 24. It's 2 degrees and now sunny in Beijing, highs of 3 and lows of minus 9. And mostly cloudy conditions at 7 in Paris, going to highs of 11. 12 will be the high in a cloudy London at 7 and it's 9 degrees and cloudy in New York still Monday night coming into Tuesday. We'll see highs of 12. and lows of my of 9 mature intelligent talk every morning spice up yourself yeah. 
Mornings done right. 94.4. Spice. Good morning in terms of traffic coming out of traffic hour. Not too long from now. Um, we saw most of it on the thicker super highway. A little bit of it coming onto Joko Road. And Juja Road also had quite some. Seems to be moving all right. Outer Ring is doing really well as well. Going in either direction. So you should be all right. Into the CBDs where you see most of the action. Uh, Landage Road. And a little bit right around Kamkunji. We're seeing action picking up throughout the week. But for today, it looks pretty good. Let's talk through the morning on Spice FM KE. Twitter. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Right. 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. 012600. Let's hear from you. There are people who are sending comments as well on social media. Mm. Um, it's interesting because Serikali ni Mungu, si Maombi ni Uchawi. What? Okay. Um, <laughs> Um, let's agree that this current situation is a culmination of the previous government mishaps. All this, all this needs time to be corrected, according to Ishuga. Um, he says, I think they should sit down and figure out how Ruto's manifesto fits into every departmental section to move forward as one streamlining. Hannington Adore says, we must start by accepting that as Kenyans, we make mistakes every five years repetitively and expect different miracles. Let's stop digging and rethink Mm-hmm. Mm. Stop digging. Yeah. This is the time now to just internalize what we've been doing. Yeah. Our actions. Mm. Where, my friend? All right. So, what is it that you expect from the government this year? What do we expect to see? There's something that I'm noticing that there are those who have called in, the two that have called in, those, the comments that we've seen on social media, the amount of leeway and playing room that the administration had it's starting to shrink and all it's no longer you know that happiness of ah we have a new government oh no 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 it's, it's now it's now those ones of all right so we have seen we there's the hundred days that the Ruto administration has been in office have not really borne that fruit of getting people to feel yes we are heading somewhere the it's confidence like, hasn't kicked in. It's like, yes, mm. it's, it's, it's not there yet. But is it that the confidence hasn't kicked in or is it hopes have been dashed? It's like hope, hopes are getting dashed. Yeah. Already, so yes. early in the game. People, People are already starting to feel, oh my God, he's, I've, there's really but, no but, difference but, but, between but, this and the other. But if the hopes are being dashed, mm. then it means that the expectations were high. Very. Or that they existed. Yes, mm. yes. Uh, but, but the question is, were the expectations based on reality? Because even if the government comes in, 100 days go by, 200 days go by, what ac can you actually do in 100 days? Rally people. And that's why I come in with the truth. If the government actually came in and said, you know what, guys, this is where we are. We are all going to have to do this, sit back, hunker down, Expect nothing to change in the next 12 months, but we have started. And look, we have started. We are doing this and the other. Then there'd be that thing of people going with that expectation, but also having the confidence that, yeah, these guys are different from the previous lot. The feeling now is that these guys are not different from the previous lot. Mm. It's that they are the same. And that's why people are saying, James Bugambi is saying nothing but lies. Jeff Wanjedi says more empty promises and lies and propaganda and my shangumu. Gitonga Kihara says, just talking, 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 and more talking, no action. <laughs> you know the... <laughs> it basically just tells you, people are like, ah, Again. I was hoping to see, I was hoping that these new guys, I was hoping that these new hustlers would do things that are different. I was hoping from all the actions, the accumulation of all the actions that we've seen in the last 100 plus days of the Ruto administration are pointing to the same old, same old. So, the expectations, the high mm. anticipation mm. of promises being fulfilled, we are saying that many of the people who've called in and the people who are on social media are simply saying, we don't expect to see anything being done. Yeah. And I'm asking the question because similar issues were raised and were brought 
into the field of discussion with the Uhuru government. Mm. Now, there's something that I said then, and I'm going to say something similar now. Mm -hmm. The Uhuru government had something unique that no other government had had. They were grappling with a new constitution and the brunt of it. Mm. We now have, have had 10 years of seeing how to, what to do, what can't be done, what can be done. But this particular government is dealing with the brunt of COVID. And they're dealing with the brunt of natural <laughs> forces. You know, Eric's, Eric's, Eric's sense of humor, I, th I think, has improved. Let's just us go to London and listen to Mat Matunda. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, Eric and the team. Happy New Year. Good Happy New Year to you too, Matunda. How is London? Uh, it's easy to know. London is good and cold. Mm. Nabaridi, Mekuja, Nambua, Kidogo, I think we should send you a bit of rain there. Yeah, mm. you should. But Poleni Kobaridi. Uh, Sante sana. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, to add on to what you are asking about this 2023 government promises, I think, uh, you see, we, our leaders need to just learn fast to stop being on a campaign mode. Mm -hmm. We keep referencing... Uh, I think uh, we need to see the actions rather than the too much talk and too many promises. Yeah. At the end of the day, maybe another 200 days or another six months, we shall be taking stock and seeing that the promises are still promises and nothing is being done. Mm. You know, we need to encourage investors to come and... Uh, have our like, electricity supply as you were saying earlier we have a lot and yet we are still entering into contracts with other regional countries to give us more yeah. and yet our tariffs are very high the investors are going to where it is cheaper yeah. so let us start from a point of saying he it cheaper and we are going to make sure that the investors come here rather than going to other countries because our tariffs are going to be low our generation is going to be very good and then the young people can get more jobs yep. and be able to to do some good work but we are encouraging young people to go and do business and yet we want to encourage them to pay taxes to hustler funds which they're receiving 500 shillings and getting uh, no reward for that money because 500 shillings won't set up a business yeah yeah good so point. let us look at a situation where we are reviewing this in another six months yeah and I'm sure we will be, the president will be standing there telling us, you see, I'm, I'm still on track, I'm going to do this and that. But unless they stop politics and start to realize they are sitting on the hot seat, yeah. let them govern us and uh, give us uh, directives which are working and not just getting jobs for their friends. God bless That's my take for the Thank you very much, Matunda. Yeah, God bless you. Thank you so much for the good work you guys are doing and enlightening us early, very early in the morning. Asante. 0719 600 Where are you calling in from? Let's hear from you. What do you expect from the government in the year 2023? Matunda says, you know what? Eh? These guys need to know this thing of continuing to promise things like you're campaigning. Stop it. Stop it now. You're in office. Do things. This thing of just... Uh, rubbishing everything that you're hearing and saying, you know, to different. Okay, show us that how different you are. Stop just talking. Crossing over from London to Australia, Leon is there. Good morning, Leon. Good morning. It's a bit uh, midday. Well, here, it's, good morning. it's good afternoon you to you. It is. <laughs> Which part of Australia are you uh, in? What, what I want to quickly say, uh, Western Australia, Perth. Okay. Yeah, I just want to quickly say that, because uh, I'm at work, I just want to quickly say that I think for things to work at the moment in Kenya, I think every person has to do their jobs, not not just the, the cabinet secretary and all. I'm just saying from the from the damn below, from the employees of the, of the public service, yep. everyone has to perform for everything to work. Because we can't just expect to be making all these policies that have been made for all these years. They're really good, they're brilliant policies, but then... Just, to, just for them to work, they don't work. It, it means that us, like employees of the or people at the government, but like public servants, I don't think they're doing their jobs. And it's either all these public servants get shuffled mm. and get new people in, or 
Or we think, I don't know. Or, or we, 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 we do shit. Sorry for the language, but yeah. Yeah. We get you, Leon. Although your line is uh, kind of rough, but yes, we get your point, which is everybody should work. Thank you very much, Leon, calling in from Perth, Australia, in Nandi County, Kenya. Robert, Happy New Year. How are you? Happy New Year, too. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you, people? We are well. Thank you. Yeah, we are up and running and trying to make ends meet mm -hmm. with a lot of uncertainty in the future. Why should ends meet, though? <laughs> this yeah, in Cuba. <laughs> no, yeah, Why do we ends need to hoping, meet? We are just hoping they will meet. <laughs> 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 with, with this kind of uncertainty, Mara Kidogo, you are being told uh, there is no more subsidy in fees. Mm. Linda Mama is going, was in their house, they are cursing everybody. What happened? Where is our money? Uh -huh. you know, it, and then you guys make it even worse. When you are telling us that we are going to discuss poverty in a very elegant hotel, very expensive. <laughs> I was just dead in the morning when you guys were discussing that. Pole buona. I felt it, I felt it. Pole. What, do you, anyway, what do you expect this year? Um, you know, there, there, you can't say anything about our future right now because everything looks bleak. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, the only hope that I have is let us just uh, hope for a miracle mm. somewhere. And maybe things would change to the better because, like me as a farmer, yeah, mm. there's some time uh, just before Uru Kenyatta left here, yeah, I think uh, the leaders there had gone to beg for a subsidy for fertilizers, yeah? Mm -hmm. And they had promised, they had been promised money. So the fertilizers that our farmers were being given as KTDA mm. was that, uh, to be subsidized to a tune of uh, 5 billion Kenyan shillings. Mm -hmm. To date, I'm told that money has not been released. Hey. Yeah, and then the farmers were given that fertilizer at 3,000 shillings. Now it's like hey, that body has to go back to the farmers to look for extra money to top up on that, uh, what, the amount that was uh, wow. being subsidized. So you wonder, hey, how do you even start? Now you've not even paid school fees, and they want to come back to you to top up what you had taken. Yeah. That is how bleak it is, yeah? So what, what do you hope to see? I mean, hope, hope, okay, <laughs> not hope. What, I've told what, you I'm hoping for a miracle. What are your hope now? <laughs> what would you want? What would you want the government to do? No, the first thing, Kuba, let me tell you, when people don't have food in their tables, nobody thinks here. Yeah. Mm. Let me just hope for that somebody somewhere will first think of how to feed these people. Mm -hmm. So that's some energy is in their brain mm -hmm. for them to think. To answer the food, because that is so basic. Yeah. You too. If that, they can do that, maybe these other things about electricity. Yesterday I was trying to buy my own, pay my own bills. Nick, uh, the units that I was getting, I was like, my God, is this how we are going? And then yesterday again, I went to the bank just to deposit my money mm. from m -Pesa to my bank. He made ah. that It is my money. <laughs> Look at these guys. He <laughs> pays and then before I even deposited, <laughs> Kazam Shippi, my brother. Kazam Shippi. Happy 2023. Mungu saidia. Mungu saidia. Dennis in Nairobi. Yes, how are you? Good morning. Good morning to you. Now, you see, Kenyans made their bed. They must be prepared to lie on it. They really don't have an otherwise. What I expect this year most marriages will break will will have the rise of suicide cases mm. because yesterday i had a friend who came over to visit me mm. he told me when he would, by just withdrawing money from the bank to his name pesa yep. the bank had already took their share yep. now to turn it from mpesa to cash safari must take their share yep. people are running back to atms mm. Don't forget uh, the mobile money made our life so easy and transactions are easy. They, it made the economics of, of our lives to be so easy. Yeah. Leave that one alone. Imagine there is a rumor that Linda Mama is going. Mm. Pesa kwa waze. And what makes, to make it worse, this issue of help. We can't have every regime coming in and scrapping, scrapping some of these things that made us. Help has been there since the Moy days. Mm. Restructuring an institution, 
actually does not need just to name its name, change its name. Yep. Let them live help the way help was. They can restructure it, make it better. But help really made some of us. And uh, we are very emotional about help going away. Mm. Otherwise, uh, let Kenyans lie on their bed. And uh, Happy New Year to all of you. Happy New Year to you too, brother. Yeah. Wish. Morgan says, what do you expect from this government in 2023? Additional promises, nothing beyond that. Levi, only pain. Uh, Maureen Marina, nothing. Bruno Kingston, what do you expect from the government? Putting the words into action. Jeff Wanjidi, more empty promises and lies and propaganda and my shangumu. Eh. <laughs> what is this based on? Expectations. You see, the, the fundamental foundation of disappointment mm. is expectation. Yeah. Because, and it also says that the expectations were accompanied by goodwill. People believed what they heard. Mm. Some wanted to believe, but people believed. Because all this outpouring doesn't come from just nothing. Mm. Yes. But then there are those who are on the opposite side who are now sitting back and saying, see? Yes, there are those. See? Mm. There are those. Right? And, and so, just as we say, the government also needs to move away from campaigning and move on <laughs> so to the rest of But us. move on to what? Look. Move uh, on to action. Move on to governing. Get the job done. Move Eric, on to some, doing the job Eric, that you are. Some, something you ask for a job, you've been given a job. You yes. can't keep saying, you know, if you yes. give me this job. Yes. <laughs> and yes. you're sitting in the seat. Yes. Yes. All that you say is true. Mm. There's a little reality here about wanting a job, getting it, and getting things done. Mm. Okay? I've heard people complain that some of the appointments that they keep seeing, some have to do with cronies, people who purportedly, supposedly supported. Look, it doesn't matter what reason you give to it. The thing about politics is that there will be people who have supported you and they will be rewarded. It mm. happens everywhere in every political system on this planet. Mm. Every. So uh, this isn't something new. Was there a drought before President Ruto became president? Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. there is a drought even. Mm -hmm. There is a drought even now. Was there COVID? Yes. Yes, there was. And he was a vice president. Okay. Yeah. Were we borrowing money? Yes. Yes. Problem is not just the promises, but the things that were said would be done and the things that were castigated as having been negative. And now we look and we say, but... Did you not say that this was wrong? Did you not say you're going to do this? Mm. And some, why are we seeing you doing the very things you said you wouldn't do? Yeah, exactly. Now, right. now, reality here is, given the situation that we are in, and now this is where the will, and the question that we asked earlier mm. on, do we see the will? You said there was a whip. Do we see the will to see that whip cracked? Mm -hmm. Because if it isn't cracked, when Kenyans talk about not seeing any change from the previous government. Oh, they're absolutely right. The only problem is that it'll be worse because if there's a problem in the previous administration and it's being compounded now, our situation is not the same. It's worse. Mm. Yeah. Now, what we saw happening with the governor of Meru, yep. I expect to see more of those things. Now, there are people who are sitting pretty who think it won't happen to them. They're called members of parliament. Mm. Believe me, the moment people have to deal with issues on a daily basis that involve their lives and they can understand and see that there are people who are paid to make my life better than it is now. Mm. The next thing they're going to think of, what did the constitution say about getting rid of these people? Because this particular person isn't really helping my cause. Yep. Now, this is not something that is going to happen. When we had uh, one Thuranira here, mm. the thing that occurred to me as we spoke with him. This is yes, I'm Tukufu. He is not a lawyer, mm. but he has taken time to understand the constitution and to understand what his rights are. Do you think he's the only Kenyan who has done that? Nope. No. There are many more Kenyans. And this is where the issue comes in. You know, by the time people are actually 
taking action like that. Yes. Because they've been disappointed. They have. But that disappointment has come at a cost. Because yes. every passing day, it's costing you something to actually have somebody in office who should be doing you, you're paying for you're paying this very person who's letting you down. You're actually paying them. Yes, mm. they're costing you. So it's like you're paying them to let you down. Teddy Carrier says, I'm more optimistic about this year. Let's put the government aside, roll up our sleeves and get to work. We can create more opportunities in the private sector. There's no need to be cynical when the future is ours to create. And that's true, Teddy. However, you see, all those things require a government that's working. <laughs> what, how you speak, Teddy, is how many people are speaking. Mm -hmm. They actually are ready to roll up their sleeves. But you got to meet us. And that's the thing that, that, that the government needs to know. That this is what State House needs to know. And all the ministers and all the PSs and all the directors and everybody in public service that Kenyans are willing to work. And if Kenyans you came, are showing up every day. But so I said, if you, came to the, if you came to us with the truth and said, you know what, eh? because of this situation, this, this, this and the other, we, we need X amount of money to feed people. We need to do this and that to make sure that our, this, just come to us with the truth and then show us that you're doing something. Play your part. If I don't feel like you are actually walking the talk. Essentially, you are not carrying your part of the load. Eh? You know, it's not Kenyans. Kenya is where it is because Kenyans have been holding their sleeves. That, that's why we are where we are. Mm. When people talk about having more taxes, we forget that these impoverished Kenyans are already raising that two trillion we keep talking about. Do you yep. know the difference between what is happening here and a country that has internal conflicts because kenya is very far it's very it, there's the, the line between a situation of peace and a situation of conflict is very thin it's extremely thin now because and this is why this comment by teddy is very important because kenyans are showing up on a daily basis and are investing in this elasticity of hope is the reason why you do not have that internal conflict mm. yes the difference is that because people refuse to show up because you have let them down time and time again, it becomes a situation of conflict where people are saying, all right, well, we've been ready. You have not. So guess what? That's why you have rebel situations. That's why you have people who are saying, you know what? We're going to down our tools. Yeah. We're not going to do this anymore. You want us to show up every day, but you're not providing the tools for which we need, which you are required to do as a nation. You don't do it, then okay. To the dogs. That's where the conflict comes. We move comes. on and forget about you. Well, Kenyans thank you very up. much for tuning into the Situation Room today. We've started the year, and like we promise every time, our show will make sure that we speak for the people and we allow, allow you the opportunity to come out and speak to your government because you've elected a government. It's in office. It ought to deliver. There's no two ways about it. There's no giving them leeway for this or the other you know because you know the war in ukraine fine there's a war in ukraine but we are here in kenya and we're living and we've got to continue living so what is it that we need to do to adjust all of us to the situation that's been brought to us by the war in ukraine see you again tomorrow morning 6 a.m to 10 a.m have a lovely day it's now 10 o'clock